Hello everybody. Welcome to my live. We're going to cover Mystery Babylon today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. I see a lot of people that have left my platform. Left me hanging. I am so disappointed. Was it because of that message yesterday? That message stepped on some toes, didn't it? I know. I know it did. That message yesterday stepped on some toes. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hello, Miss Andrews. You're the first to pop in here. Jay followed. Hello, Miss Jay. That message yesterday must have caused a lot of people to dislike me because I lost a lot of subscribers yesterday. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. A lot of people unsubscribed to me yesterday. Wow, they don't like the word of God. That's what that is. It's not me. It's them. Hello, everybody. Elijah, Stacy, Lynn, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Guys, I'm going to cut it a little short tonight. Unless you guys want to cover both like I, I intended to, I'm going to let you choose. How about that? Should we do the Antichrist and uh, Mystery Babylon or just only Mystery Babylon or only the Antichrist? If you have a choice to do either or or do both. Let me hear from you. You missed me yesterday? I missed you too, Stacy. That's right. We missed you too. Hello. So, you guys choose if we're going to do one or the other, Mystery Babylon or the Antichrist, or both Mystery Babylon and the Antichrist. Yes, it's not good enough. Both one Antichrist or or the uh, Mystery Babylon. Do both, 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 okay. That's what I got from you, that's what we're gonna do. Amen. All right then, well there we go. Everybody in agreement. Y'all wouldn't believe I looked at my subscribers and see how many subscribers I had. And you know, I had 200 and Three, well, 1,203. And when I looked at it today, just now, it's 1,000. <laughs> and like, let me see, let me look at, let, let me look at, <laughs> I got to look at this again. Something happened. People jumped off from subscribing to me yesterday or today. Um, yeah, 1,118. It was 1,203 and, and the last time I checked. So I lost a lot of people. You, you hit the thumbs up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So I know it had to be because of that message yesterday. It's the truth. You know, people are going to be mad. Some people got mad probably. Because I said, this stop playing around, I don't know. Uh, could have been that too. This is not a playing around platform. This is real. Today we're going to see what we are, guys, because um, all three players are in it right now. We are entering that last hour of him making war for 42 months. The scripture says the Antichrist is going to make war for 42 months. He's doing that right now, and people just don't see it, you know. That's what's happening. He started making war in um, February last uh, last year, February 24, 2022, correction. And uh, he gonna make war for 42 months. I'm not worried about it, Jeff. If they come back, that's fine. If they don't, I'm okay with that as well. So, <laughs> you know, I'm just presenting the truth. If they like it, that's good. If they don't like it, 
that's good too. You know, many will receive and many won't. So that's it. I'm not worried about that. I've just looked at how many people because of that message yesterday unsubscribed to me. Some people just don't receive the truth, you know. I'll have no control over that. I gave them the truth. Exactly. And they don't want that. They like it the way it is, and you don't see no power in the church because of it. They want to control and not God. They don't want Christ to control in his church. They want to rule. That's what it is. Okay? So we're going to start with the Antichrist then, guys. Y'all know the Y'all know the code. The code is let's rock and roll. Hello, Leona. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, you guys are faithful. I really appreciate you guys. I really do. I mean, some are faithful and some are not. So you can't do nothing about that. Those who choose not to be faithful and show up and support. Let's rock and roll. We got one. Amen. Thank you for that, Lynn. God bless you. Hello, Barbara. Barbara's still here. Jay's still here with us. And Leona's still here with us. Amen. <laughs> okay, we're going to rock and roll then, you know. So, we, you know, we're going to start in Thessalonians with the Antichrist. What to look for. He's in power. He took power January 20th, 2021. He began to make war one year later. He started the war in Ukraine in February of, of, of 2022. And he's going to continue to make war until Christ returns. So he's going to make war with the saints after he subdued three kings. He's going to take down three kings, Russia, China, and Iran. He's doing that right now. And then he's going to come after us. Okay, God told me he's in power. That's him. Barack Obama is the man of sin, the son of perdition. He's in power. Okay? He never left. He'd been doing stuff all along. But now he's back. Amen. Y'all ready? Let's rock and roll. Now we beseech you, my brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord, Yeshua the Christ, and concerning our gathering together with him, that you let not your minds be hastily excited or troubled, neither by word nor by prophecy of the Spirit, nor by an epistle supposedly from us. Stating that the day of our Lord is at hand. You hear what he's saying? He said, don't let your mind be hastily excited or troubled when people start saying, the Lord is about to come back, the Lord is soon to return. That's what he's referring to. He said, don't let your mind be bothered by that. Okay, don't worry about when people start saying that kind of stuff. Even if they start telling the prophecies are being fulfilled about the epistles and all that. He said, don't even worry about it. Then the next verse gives us what to look for. He said, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come unless it is preceded by a rebellion and the son of the, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Okay? He's telling us what to look for. The King James says, a great falling away. But still, basically, it's saying the same way. It depend, same thing if, depends on how you look at it. Okay? I can look at a great falling away. It's falling away from the government. They don't trust the government anymore because it's not talking about falling away from God. Man been falling away from God ever since the beginning. Okay, even right now, they been fell away from God. Okay, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come unless it is preceded by a rebellion. What that was on January 6, 2021. Wasn't that a rebellion? Wasn't that a falling away from the government when they stormed the Capitol? Of course it was. Was that scripture, or uh, is this scripture talking about that? We're going to find out. Okay. So that's a rebellion. It says the man of sin is going to be revealed after that. The rebellion first, and then the man of sin will be revealed. The church, the, the true shepherds from God get to see who he is first. Okay, the shepherds that are in, uh, in relation with God, in his word every day, they're going to see it first. They're going to know who the Antichrist is first before the world knows. Okay, and it's that shepherd's job to inform, inform the, the church that the Antichrist is in power. Okay. If the shepherds in the church right now don't see that the Antichrist is in power and telling it to the people, they don't, they're not hearing from God, okay? And that's dangerous. So that rebellion was on the 6th of uh, January, January 6, 2021, okay? Was it talking about that? The man of sin took power again 
when he when he when that after that. Okay, he was already in power before Joe Biden, and I mean before yeah before uh, what's his name Donald Trump. Now he returned with Joe Biden face before the general public, and we're gonna prove it to you that he's back. Joe Biden is not the president; he's just a, a face for the general public, and we're about to prove that. Okay, let's keep going. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. It's not saying that he's coming in saying he's God. He's going to oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God. Okay? Or that even reverence. That is reverence. So that even in the temple of God, we need to understand what this means. It's not talking about a temple made with hand over in Jerusalem. We're going to see that as we go on as well. It's talking about the people. So that even in the temple of God, he sits in as a God. Okay? Meaning he's the abide in the people, the abode in the people. That word sit, the Greek word for that uh, word is abode. God, Christ said he and the Father will come and make a place of abode in us. Okay? So he want to replace God and Christ in the temple of God, which is the people. Okay? Which are the people. Okay? And he's going to show himself as though he were God. Meaning the authority and power that he has. Okay? Over the people. Let's keep going. Then shall stand up in his place a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom. But within a short time he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. And in his place shall rise up a vile person, to whom they shall not bestow the royal honor. But he shall come suddenly and seize the kingdom by fraud. Did this cause the rebellion? Let's look at it. Then shall stand up in his place a raiser of taxes. That's Donald Trump. Donald Trump, three days after he took power, he raised tariffs upon the U.S. dollar. All countries using the U.S. dollar, he raised taxes. Okay? And he did it for the glory of the kingdom to make America great again. Let's read that again. Then shall stand up in his place a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom. That was John, Donald Trump's motto was make America great again. He raised taxes on all who you, all the nations that used the U.S. dollar. He raised tariffs three days after he took power. Okay? But within a short time, he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. That came to pass. Listen to what happened. And in his place shall rise up a vile person, to whom they shall not bestow the royal honor. But he shall come suddenly and seize the kingdom by fraud. There it is right there. They're letting us know. The scripture telling us that the kingdom was taken by fraud. This person did not win the election. They stole it. Okay? And that vile person, meaning the Antichrist, showed back up in power. He was already in power once. He had got out of power when Donald Trump showed up. The scripture says he will return. And that's what happened. He's back. And I'm going to prove it to you from the scriptures. Let's keep going. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come unless it is preceded by a rebellion and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So that's what caused the rebellion. When he seized the kingdom by fraud, they stormed the capital. That prophecy came to pass January 6, 2021. And the man of sin took power 14 days later. Okay, he was revealed after that. He's revealed to the church first. Those who are the true church, we get to see it first. God revealed it to us through dreams. And the Christ is in power and his name is Barack Obama. I'm going to prove it to you from the scriptures. Okay, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is, or that is reverent so that even in the temple of God, he sits as a God and shows himself as though he were God. So we're going to cover the temple of God first. You don't take nothing in your body from nobody's government, okay? Your body is the temple of God, and we're about to find that out right now. Here we go. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God said. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So we are the temple of God. So they got everybody deceived talking about a third temple being built in Jerusalem, if they build a third temple over there, it is not the temple of God. God don't dwell in temples made with hands. The scripture tells us plainly that we are the temple of God. So the Antichrist is going to put himself in the people through some kind of device with that mark of the beast. Okay, that's what he's speaking of. He's going to sit in the temple of God. See it right there? So that even in the temple of God, he sits as a God. Okay, talking about the people. He's going to put himself, the mark of the beast. It's the, that's him putting himself in the people, his DNA, whatever that's going to be. Okay, so we are the temple of God. All these false shepherds got everybody believing that there's going to be a third temple over there and the Antichrist is going to rule from over there. That's a lie. That's nowhere in scripture. Okay, the scripture telling us what to look out for. 
We, he gonna try to put himself in the people. That's God said. Christ said he and the Father gonna come and make a place of abode in us. That word abode in Greek is sit to sit in the people. Is what Christ and God wants to do. He wants to dwell in us. And the Antichrist wants to replace uh, God and Christ in in the people with Himself. Is what that's going on. Let's take a look. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? And if any man defiles the temple of God, him God will destroy. For the temple of God is holy, and that temple is you. You see that? All throughout the scripture, we are the temple of God. When God had Rome to come in, Jerusalem, and destroy the second temple, uh, when Christ died on the cross 70 years later, God brought Rome in to destroy that temple. We became the temple of God when Christ died on the cross. Okay, And he left his word for us to be sanctified by his word that he may abide in us. We are the temple of God. You ought to let no one, no government, or no one put anything in your body. Your body is the temple of God. We need to know that. Here we go. When you see the sign of uncleanness and desolation, as spoken by the prophet Daniel, accumulating in the holy place, talking about people, not talking about no land. It's talking about us. Accumulating in the people, the mark of the beast. He says when you see that happening, he's telling those who ever read, understand what he's saying. He has that in parentheses. He's giving us the heads up. When you see it accumulating in the people, that holy place are the people. Take a look. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are. Okay? You see that? Christ is the word of God. He's over his own house. His own house is his human body. Now it says whose house we are. Christ the word of God. We are now his house. God and man. We are the temple of the living God. That's the reason God sent his word, so that he can live in his people, okay? God and man is what that is. You see that? Let's keep going. For the God who made the world and all things therein, and who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. See that? If they do build a third temple over in Jerusalem, it is not the temple of God. We need to understand that, okay? God does not dwell in temples made with hands. See that? For the God who made the world and all things therein and who is Lord of heaven and earth does not dwell in temples made with hands. Let's keep going. But Solomon built God a house, yet the Most High did not dwell in temples made with hands, as said the prophets. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord, or where is the place of my rest? You see that? There's nothing that can contain God. He sits on the heaven. He says heaven is his throne. So there's nothing that can contain God. So God sent us his word and the spirit of God, which is breath, to live in us. God is one, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. The Word is Christ. That's what he sent us. Christ in us is the mystery of the gospel. And we get the Holy Spirit after we receive the Spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is first and then the Holy Ghost. Okay? God and man. That's what he sent us. Okay? Here we go. Do you not know that those that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? And if any man defiles the temple of God, him God will destroy. For the temple of God is holy, and that temple is you. You see that? God's temple is holy. He sent his word to sanctify us, to make us holy. Okay? That's why he called, he called us holy before we even became holy. That's the reason he sent the word. God dwells in his people through the word. Okay? The word is Christ. Christ is his son. Okay? His, his Christ in us is the mystery of the gospel. Okay? So we see that? We are the temple of God. The temple that they're going to build over there in Jerusalem is not God's temple. That's deception. That's to deceive the people. Okay? We need to understand that. Hello, Rick. Good to see you. Many will deceive and run to have them. That's right. Many will be deceived and run to have the mark. You see how they start running for that vaccine. Thank God that wasn't the mark of the beast because many people would have been messed up by now. You know what I mean? So we don't put nothing in our body from the government. The government don't work for God. Okay, they work for the enemy. If the scripture tells us, Satan rules the governments of this world now until Christ returns. And we're going to see that as we go on. Satan is in charge now. The church is supposed to be separate from the world. That's why the scripture tells us don't be conformed to the world. The world is the world system. We're not supposed to be conformed to that. We're supposed to follow God through Christ right here. This is what we, we're supposed to be conformed to Christ. 
Okay? We're not supposed to be living under their rule, under their laws. We live in here among them, just as Abraham lived among them. And he didn't affiliate with their laws or nothing like that. When his disciples in Christ was here, they did the same thing. They kept the Torah, the word of God, until Christ came. And Christ brought the word, himself the word to us. And we're supposed to stay there in the word. When God brought Jerusalem, uh, Rome and Jerusalem and, 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 and drove the Israelites out of Jerusalem, that got away from the church. Now the church doing their own thing. They don't want the truth. They want to just sit there and listen to somebody talk about God, but they don't want to abide in him. This is Christ right here. Christ in us is the mystery of the gospel. And we're missing out on that. And when God don't want us to miss out on that because this is our salvation right here. Christ, the human body was a sacrifice for our sins. That's how we get forgiveness through the bloodshed. But we have to have Christ to get salvation. In him is salvation. In his bloodshed, we get forgiveness of sin. That's what the scripture tells us, okay? And we're missing out. So now that we know what the temple of God is, we're going to go ahead and deal with the Antichrist and find out from the scripture, show you from the scripture that Barack Obama is the Antichrist and he's in power right now. Okay? Let's get it on. Amen. Oh, so he's going to oppose himself and exalt himself above all that is called God. He's not coming saying he's Christ or nothing like that. The scripture don't say that nowhere in the word. And he's not coming to make no seven-year peace treaty with Israel. That's nowhere in the Bible. Okay? We'll see all that as we go on as well. Okay? So we've been lied to for years. Okay? The Antichrist not coming saying he's God or Christ. It says he's going to exalt himself as he was God. Okay? Okay? He's going to put everything that out, out, of, out of your house, out of everyone's house, that has anything to do with God, they're going to take it all away from us, okay? And then he's going to put the mark of the beast in the people, okay? Which is his mark, his number or his name or whatever that may be. Don't take nothing in your body or on your body from the government. Let's keep going. Here it is. We're about to get into it now. In the first year of Balthazar, king of the Chaldeans, Daniel had a dream. And the vision of his head upon his bed, and he wrote his dream. I, Daniel, beheld and lo. The four winds of heaven blew violently upon the great sea. And there came up four great beasts out of the sea, different one from another. The first was as a lioness, and her wings as an eagle's. I beheld until her wings were plucked, and she was lifted off from the earth. And she stood on human's feet, and a man's heart was given to her. Now let's get down with it. We're going to dig a little deep in this now. We're going to scratch the surface first, like I normally like to do, and then we hit the meat. We get to the meat. Of the, of, the, of the message. Okay, let's look at it again. In the first year of Balthazar, Daniel had a dream and the vision of his head upon his bed, and he wrote his dream. Listen to what he said. I, Daniel, behold, and lo, the four winds of heaven blew violently upon the great sea. Listen at this. And there came up four great beasts out of the sea, different one from another. So these four beasts, are going to, these are four kingdoms that are going to rule until Christ comes. The first one, he described that one. We're going to cover that here in a minute. But there's only four beasts that's going to rule. And three of them has already passed. They done been in power and no longer in power. The fourth beast, the scripture tells us that's where the Antichrist is going to rise up from. The fourth one, okay? We ain't got to worry about trying to figure out what nation he's going to rise up from because the scripture tells us who the fourth beast is. And it's easy to identify. So let's get down with it. The first was as a lioness. This is modern day Iraq. Back then it was Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar. That was the most powerful nation in the world during this time. It was a superpower. That was the first superpower right there. That's the first beast. Modern day Iraq. Back then, like I said, it was uh, Babylon. Here we go. Next. And behold, the second beast like a bear. And it supported itself on one side. And there were three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And thus they said to it, Arise, devour much flesh. This is modern day Iran. Back then it was Persia. Iran was the most superpower in its time. And, and then after that, there came one uh, beast after that, which is Rome right here, okay? After this one, I looked and behold, another beast as a leopard, and it had four wings of a bird upon its back, and the beast had four heads, and power was given to it. It's describing each one of these powers that these, these uh, beasts has. This is Rome. Some people say it was Greece, but it was not. Greece wasn't the last superpower before America. America is the most powerful nation in the world now. And that's the fourth kingdom. We'll see that as we go on. It describes America in the Bible to the T, okay? The third beast was Rome. Rome was in power before America. It was Rome who God used to drive the 12 tribes out of the land. And after, the, after Rome went down, America rose up, okay? Let's keep going. And after, and after this one, I looked and behold, the fourth beast, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, 
and exceedingly strong, and his teeth were of iron, and his claws of brass, devouring and utterly breaking to pieces. And it trampled the remainder with his feet. And it was altogether different from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. Let's talk about that a little bit. It's describing how powerful this fourth kingdom is. It says that the fourth beast, he looked and behold, this beast here was dreadful and terrible and exceedingly strong. Its teeth were of iron claws of brass, devouring and utterly breaking to pieces. That means it's make other nations submit to it, okay? It devour those other nations and make them submit. That's the only nation in the world that we know that ever does such a thing. There's only one, and he's right here in America. And it trampled the remainder with his feet. Look what it says. And it was altogether different from all the beasts that were before it. All the other three beasts were from the Middle East. This beast right here, America, is not from the Middle East. That's why it's different. Look what he got. He has ten horns, okay? Now, look what he says. He's letting us know the Antichrist is going to rise up in this beast right here. Watch. I noticed his horns, and behold, another little horn came up in the midst of them. That's the Antichrist. We're going to see that as we go on. This is the little horn. The little horn is the man of sin, okay? He's going to rise up in America, okay? And behold, there were... And, be, and before it, three of the former horns are rooted out. He's going to subdue three kings. We're going to see that as we go on. He's doing that right now. Russia, China, and Iran. It's all going to happen fast. It tells us what it's going to, how it's going to be. He's going to subdue three kings. Those three horns that he's going to subdue is Russia, China, and Iran. He's working on it right now. Okay? And behold, there were eyes as the eyes of a man in this horn and a mouth speaking great things. He looks like a man. The scripture says he came up out of the bottom of this pit. He was released out of the bottom of the pit during the time the ten horns was being formed. We'll see that as we go on as well. Okay, so he came up out of the bottom of this pit when NATO began to form back in 1945 or 47, whenever they started. Okay, we'll see that as we go on. He looks like a man. He has eyes as the eyes of a man, but he's a fallen angel. Okay, that's what that is. Here we go. As for me, Daniel, my spirit and my body trembled, and the vision of my head troubled me. And I drew near to one of them that stood by, and I sought to learn of him the truth of all these things. And he told me the truth, and made known to me the interpretation of these things. These four beasts are four kingdoms that shall rise up on the earth, which shall be taken away. And the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess it forever and ever. You see that? He's saying these four beasts are four kingdoms. That shall rise up on the earth. The first beast was uh, ancient Babylon, which is modern day Iraq, then Persia, which is modern day Iran, then Rome. Rome was the last beast in power before America. And there's only four. America is the last kingdom that's going to rule until Christ returns. And it is from that kingdom that the Antichrist will rise because that beast has ten horns and seven heads. And we're going to identify him. We're going to see God gives us prophecies about those horns and those heads. Let's take a look. Then I inquired carefully concerning the fourth beast, for it was different from every other beast, exceedingly dreadful. Its teeth were of iron, claws of brass, devouring and utterly breaking to pieces, and it trampled the remainder with its feet. That's what it do. It dominates other nations, is what it's saying. Make other nations submit to it, is what that's telling us, okay? Look what it said. And concerning its ten horns that were in its head and the other that came up. The ten horns, the first ten NATO nation, we'll see that as we go on. Is the nation that uh, formed during, during the time that the Antichrist came up out of the bottom of this pit. Okay, and the other that came up is the one that was rooted up three of the former, which means he's going to take down three kings, which had eyes and a mouth speaking great things, and his look was bolder than the rest. Look what it says. I beheld, and that horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Look what he's going to do. Until the Ancient of Days came, and he gave judgment to the saints of the Most High. And the time came on, and the saints possessed the kingdom. Right now, they have the kingdom, meaning the earth. They're ruling it, okay? He's telling us they're going to rule until Christ comes. There's no pre-tribulation rapture. He's going to make war with the saints until Christ returns, okay? There's no such thing as a pre-tribulation rapture in the Bible. If you find it, send it to me, and I'll send you $1,000. I guarantee you when I find that in the Bible, no pre-tribulation rapture. Okay, it's a lie. They've been lying to us all our lives. It tells us when Christ comes, that's when it's going to be all over. The Antichrist is going to make war with us until Christ comes. Okay, 
You Christ tell you, he, he, God said, Christ said, if God did not shorten the times, uh, uh, no flesh would live. We got to endure till the end. Let's read that again. <laughs> and concerning his ten horns that were in his head and the other that came up, meaning the Antichrist, and rooted up some of the former. He's going to take down three kings. We're going to see that from the scriptures, okay? Which had eyes and a mouth speaking great things, and his look was bolder than the rest, meaning he's black. They said seven kings before him was all, uh, well, six kings before him was white, and he's bolder than theirs. His, his look is bolder than theirs, meaning he's dark-skinned. Black man, what we call them, okay? I beheld, and that horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came. That means the Antichrist is going to prevail over the saints of God until Christ comes. The only way we're going to be able to overcome him if we're going to see that as we go on to is through the words of Christ and his uh, blood sacrifice by confessing those words out of our mouth and confessing his blood sacrifice on the cross. That's how we're going to overcome him. Okay, the scripture tells us how to do it, but will the church be doing it? Because many, and I never heard nobody talk about it. It tells us that scripture that says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. But you never hear nobody preach that to the people. When this start happening, you got to remember Start confessing that Yeshua died on the cross for my sin. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead and then start quoting his words that he spoke. That's it. The word of our testimony is the word of God. Christ. And we, we got to do that. That's how we're going to overcome him. Our words don't overcome the Antichrist. He's an entity. The word of God does. We got to remember that. I never hear anybody preach this. Okay. It tells us this is how we're going to overcome him. But you're saying he's going to prevail because the church is not being taught. Of what we have to do when this thing show up and start prevailing against us. Let's keep going. And he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom on the earth which shall excel all other kingdoms. Only one, America, okay? And shall devour the whole earth and trample and destroy it. And his ten horns that were in his head and the other that, in his ten horns, or ten kings, I'm sorry guys. His ten horns are ten kings that shall arise. And after them shall arise another who, ha who shall exceed all former ones in wickedness. And he shall subdue three kings. Talking about the Antichrist. He's going to take down three kings. He's doing it right now. Iran, Russia, and China. He's going to take them down. Okay? And he shall speak words against the Most High. And he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And shall think to change time. And law and power shall be given into his hands for a time and times and half a time. That's three and a half years. Power was given into his hand for that long, okay? He's making war until Christ comes, okay? We are in it right now, guys. And I'm going to prove it to you. This is not a game. This is not fear mongering. This is waking you up. We are in it right now, okay? These are the four, uh, four kingdoms. First, it was Babylon. That was the lion. The bear was Persia, okay? And then you have Rome, which is the leopard. The dreadful and terrible one is the United States of America, and they're gonna he's gonna rule until Christ returns. Okay, the fourth beast, the scripture calls the, the nation the fourth beast, and it calls the Antichrist the beast. Okay? So you got the nation, you got to look and see what the words are saying in order to distinguish which one is speaking of. Okay? The fourth beast is the fourth kingdom that has ten horns and seven heads. Okay? When you see that, you know it's talking about America, the kingdom. And then when you start talking about the Antichrist, it's saying the little horn going to make war with the saints. It's talking about the Antichrist, and he's also identified as the beast. Okay? We'll see that as we go on. Let's take a look. And the ten horns, and his ten horns are ten kings that shall arise, and after them shall arise another who shall exceed all former ones in wickedness, and he shall subdue three kings. He's doing it right now, guys. Let's take a look. These are the ten horns. He came up in the midst of them when they first began to form NATO. He came up out of the bottom of this pit. He'd been here for a while. Okay? He ain't just, they got pictures of him when he was a little boy. He's an entity. He can shape ship into a baby if he wants to. He has that ability. The scripture says he was locked in the bottom of the pit. He's an entity. He's not human. Okay? Here we go. And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings for one hour with the beast. You see that? He's going to receive power with the beast, the Antichrist. And look what they're going to do with that power. These are of one accord, and they shall give their power 
and authority to the beast. So these 10 kings, they divide the, the world. Barack Obama on January 11th, it made national news. On January 11th, he chaired the meeting of the, uh, the United Nations where they divided the world into 10 zones. That's what the purpose of it right here. These 10 kings are going to rule over a zone. They're going to give all their power and authority over to the Antichrist. And he's going to rule all the militaries. And look what they're going to do with it. Let's take a look. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall conquer them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. You see that? So let's read that from the top again so we can get an understanding here. Okay, Barack Obama, made, and he chaired the meeting at the United Nations January the 11th, 2010, one year after he took power, they divided the world into 10 zones, and this is why he did it right here. And his 10 horns are 10 kings, which, and his 10 horns, which you saw, are 10 kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings for one hour with the beast. That one hour is the last year of his rule of making war. He's going to make war for 42 months, okay? That last hour, these kings going to give all that power over to him. And look what it says. These are of one accord, and they shall give their power and authority to the beast. So in each zone, there's 19.5 nations. With all those military, this one beast going to rule all those military. And this is what they're going to do with it. These shall make war with the lamb. And the lamb shall conquer them. They're going to fight with God. It's all in the scripture. The whole purpose of the military is right here. This is the purpose of it. They've been fighting with each other, testing those weapons. But they're getting ready for that battle of the great day of God Almighty. They're going to fight against God. If you're in the military, you're going to fight against God. Know that. They're going to shoot something in your body, and all they have to do is turn you on, and you're going to fight against the Messiah because the Scripture says so. Okay? Here we go. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one for seven weeks, it says here. But it's one week, guys. It's one week. That one hour. We just saw it right here. These are of one accord. They shall. Well, let's go from the top. And they are attending. And the ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as king for one hour one hour is one year okay and that's what this means right here not seven years so this is the king james version says seven years but the ancient text says one okay and this and this is where the false shepherds get that that word from saying that he's going to make a seven year peace treaty with israel you will not find that in the bible okay the seven year peace treaty with israel is nowhere in the bible if anyone can find that for me Send it to me, I'll send you a thousand dollars. He shall confirm the covenant with many for seven weeks, which is one week. Okay, that's what he's doing right now. Ukraine, Finland, Sweden, and all those countries over there, he's doing it right now, right under your eyes, okay? While everybody waiting for a seven-year peace treaty with Israel, Israel is not even in the land, okay? They won't be back in the land until the land is cleared out. As Ezekiel chapter 37, beginning at verse 21, read it. Also, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 1 through 5. Read it. It'll tell you when the 12 tribes return. Okay, so stop believing the lies. Okay, he's going to confirm the covenant. He's doing that right now. He confirmed the covenant with many, not Israel. Israel is not in the land. Next thing coming after that, he's going to cause a sacrifice and gift offering to cease, which means it's going to be one world religion. Okay, and then he's going to put the mark of the beast on the people right here and upon the temple shall be the abomination. He shall make it desolate. Talking about the people. Okay, and he's going to do that all the way through the consummation, and he's going to do it until Christ pour out his wrath upon those who take the mark of the beast. That's where we are right now. We're in this first line right here. Next is coming this right here. He's going to cause Christianity and all religions to cease, and he's going to put the mark of the beast on people after that, and he's going to do that all the way until the wrath of God is poured upon those who receive the mark. Let's keep going. Here it is. And the sixth angel poured out his bowl upon the great river Euphrates. And the waters there are dried up that the way of the king of the east might be prepared. That's happening right now. That means the sixth angel poured out his bowl upon the great river Euphrates. And I don't hear nobody talking about that because the waters of the, Euphrates, the river is dried up, almost completely dry. You can go and Google it or just type it in on YouTube. And they got videos of it. The river is dried up almost completely, 100%. Okay? Look what he said. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Those words, those words is communicating with the kings of the earth. 
John got to see what the words looked like. He said, I saw three unclean spirits coming out of their mouth, meaning those are words. Christ said his words are spirit, our words are spirit, and their words are spirit. John got to see how those words look. He said, these are the, uh, let's look and read it again. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. He got to see that they look like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, who is Satan himself, and out of the mouth of the beast, which is Barack Obama. These are words that communicate with the kings of the earth. And out of the mouth of the false prophet, who is Elon Musk, okay? But him or Dr. Fauci, those are the two that fit the description. For they are the spirits of devils who work miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the whole earth to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. You see that? It's all for this purpose right here. They getting ready to fight against God. They got to take down those three kings because those are the only people that can hinder him from being ready to take over the world and rule all the armies. The only one that can hinder him is China, Russia, and Iran. So he got to take them down. That's what the scripture is telling us. And they're getting ready to fight against the almighty God. That's the whole purpose of the military. And people don't see it. They don't see all the deception in what these people are doing. Okay? The scripture tells us what they're doing. They are communicating with the kings of the earth. It says that they are the spirits of devils. Those words that they are speaking look like frogs. They are the spirits of devils who work miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the whole earth. They're talking and communicating with all the kings of the earth. They're going to become one military, and they're going to fight against God. It's all right there. They To gather them to the battle of that day, of the great day of God Almighty, they're getting ready to fight with God. And I didn't put the other scripture in here. That's Revelation 19, beginning at verse 19. It's telling you all the armies of the world are going to be, they're going to meet in Armageddon. Many think Armageddon war is to fight against nation against nation. Armageddon war is not. It tells us in the Bible what Armageddon war is. It's getting ready to fight against God. It said the blood is going to be up to the horse's bridle. They're going to fight against the host of heaven. You know, that's what Armageddon is, okay? Gog and Magog won't happen until after the thousand year rule. After Christ the rule for a thousand years, that's when Satan will be released out of the bottom of the pit and gather all the nations. Try to get to China and Mongolia and all those nations that will give in to him and they're going to surround the camp of, of the saints and that's when God is going to rain down fire on them. So Armageddon is not nation fighting against nation. Armageddon is when all the nations become one nation and they're going to fight against God, the military. That's what Armageddon is. And I've been hearing, I've been hearing all on the social media people say Armageddon is about to start. No, Armageddon is not about to start. If you are, if you talk about nation fighting against nation, that's not that's not Armageddon. Armageddon is they're going to get ready to fight against God, and that won't happen until the twelve tribes get back to the land. When the twelve tribes get back to the land, that's when they're going to surround the land of Israel, and that's when the host of heaven coming, and that's when the battle begins. <laughs> it was just like that. Amen. I'm going to read y'all questions here in a minute. Amen. All right. I was trying to read something. It looked like somebody said something and that didn't look pleasant to me. So I'm going to keep reading, okay? And as I stood on the sand of the shore, I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads. We have covered the ten horns, that's NATO, and the seven heads was the last seven presidents until Christ comes. Okay, the number, the last head is, is going to rule till Christ come. Okay, we're going to go over those heads, okay? The last, these are the last seven presidents that you will see on the scene. You will not see another one come after these seven, okay? And upon his head, head on, upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, blasphemous words. That means the heads are men. These are kings, okay? Or president, what we call them today. But God called them kings in the Bible, Okay? But the blasphemous words is they speak against other nations to get the, their general public to side with what they're about to do is go over there and dominate that nation. So every time you see a president come on the news, they start talking down on that other nation over there before they go and attack it. That's what this means. Upon his heads, those seven kings, they blaspheme against other nations, okay? And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth was like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon, you see where he got the power from? And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. And one of his heads, as though mortally wounded, but his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered about the beast. 
And they worshiped the dragon because he gave power to the beast, saying, who can prevail against the beast to make war with him? Now, we're going to cover the highlighted part first. And then we're going to drop down and cover this from Scripture. I'm using Scripture to cover everything that I'm pre presenting to you, okay? So we're going to start right here. We're going to cover the ten horns. Now let's look at the seven heads. Here we go. And there are seven kings, of whom five have fallen, and one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he shall continue only for a short time. Remember the raise of taxes? They got rid of him in a short time? Still talking about that same king. He's number seven, okay? And the beast that was, meaning the one that was before him, they call him the beast, the number six. And no longer is when the number seven is in power. It says even he will return as the number eight king. And he's one of the seven. So there's seven kings. One is, meaning the, uh, the one, the number six was in power. And the other has not yet come. That's Donald Trump. We'll see that here in a minute. It says when he come, he's going to continue only for a short time. It says in the beast that was, the one that was before him which is Barack Obama, and no longer is when Donald Trump was in power. It says even he's going to return as the number eight king, and he's one of the seven. You see that? And he goes into perdition. That means he has access to hell. The scripture says he's the son of hell, okay, the son of perdition, okay? So he has access to go down and visit his daddy. The people that was on earth when he was in the presidency, they get to see him come down there, but they can't come back up here and tell us about it, okay? Let's take a look. These are the last seven kings you're going to see until Christ comes. All right, that says five have fallen. They are no longer in power. It says one is the number six, and the other has not yet come, the number seven. It says when he comes, he's going to continue only for a short time. And the beast, called the number six, the beast. The beast that was and no longer is when the Donald Trump took power, it says he will return as the number eight king. See that? We'll prove it to you. Just bear with me. I got the evidence. Let's move on. And as I stood on the sand of the shore, I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads. We're about to cover the seven heads some more. And upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, blasphemous words. Listen at this. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth were like the mouth of the lion. Meaning he has the same power the other three beasts before him had, and look what else he got. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. The dragon, Satan himself, gave that fourth beast his power. That's why it is able to have a military base all over the world and dominate other nations because he got the power of Satan, the throne of Satan, and he has great authority from Satan. The throne of Satan is America. Okay, let's take a look where Satan get his power from. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, there was a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. And seven crowns upon his head. Didn't that what the beast have? Look. And as I stood on the sword, sand of the shore, I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads. Now let's go back to Satan. And up there appeared another one in heaven. And behold, there was a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. The scripture says Satan is a beautiful angel. It identifies him as the son of the morning. It's telling how great a power that this drag, uh, Satan had in heaven. God gave him that power, okay? His, he has seven heads, meaning he had the power of seven kings and ten more kings, okay? He had all that power in heaven, and God cast him down with it. And he tells us why in the scripture that he cast it down with it, because all the words of God must be fulfilled. That's why he cast him down with all that power. Satan is the one that distributed the power. And he gave it to the fourth kingdom because the fourth kingdom are bowed down to him. Okay? Anyone get in that White House, they have to bow down to the dragon. Your vote didn't put him there. The dragon put him there. Let's take a look. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. You see that? Watch this. And the devil said to him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered to me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Yeshua answered and said unto him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. You see that? 
He tried to give it to Christ. Christ put the word on him. You shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. But those men that get in that White House, they don't. They bow down to that thing. You think your vote put him in there? Satan giving out the power. Here it is right here. All this power will I give thee. And the glory of them. See that? See that? Satan is the of the power. He gave the power to the fourth kingdom. He through scripture called him the God of the world. Listen to that right here. In whom the God of this world. Talking about Satan. He's the God of this world until Christ return. We supposed to worship Christ. We're not supposed to be conformed to the world. That's the reason scripture tells us do not be conformed to the world. The world is under the world's rule. And that's Satan. You understand? He rules the world. The God of this is telling us right here. In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not. You see that? Satan ruling now. We're not supposed to follow his rule, not the church. God gave us a will in the matter. He said what they was going to do to us for his name's sake. Okay, when we follow Christ, they're going to persecute us. They're going to arrest us. They're going to do all these things to us. We know that we can't live in fear, but we're not supposed to worship the dragon. Okay? Nor his kingdom. We're not supposed to pledge no allegiance to his flag. They started us off when we was children pledging allegiance to his flag is what's been happening to us, okay? You don't pledge no allegiance to nothing but God, okay? Then when you pledge allegiance to something, you're making that your God, okay? They started us off as children worshiping the flag. I don't worship that flag. I worship God. Let's go. Now we're going to look at which one of those heads, the seven heads, those seven kings, those presidents, seven presidents, we call them, but the scripture called them seven kings, seven heads. One of them was wounded. They said that all uh, these false shepherds said the Antichrist is going to be wounded in the head. You don't find that nowhere in the Bible neither. They've been lying to us all our life. I like to start at the top, guys, to keep it fresh on your mind. Okay? Let's start from the top. Now, as I stood on the sand of the shore, I saw a beast rise up out of the sea having ten horns and seven heads. The seven heads are seven men. It don't say nothing about the Antichrist being, it didn't name no Pacific head that's going to be wounded. Okay, we'll see that as we go. And upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, blasphemous words. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth were like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon, Satan himself, gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. Listen, listen at this. And one of his heads as though mortally wounded, but his deadly wound was healed. It didn't say the Antichrist. It says one of them going to be wounded. But it was a deadly wound because it says a deadly wound was healed. It didn't say he was going to be wounded in the head. It says one of the heads, meaning one of these men. Okay? It didn't say he was going to be wounded in the head. One of these men going to be mortally wounded, but his deadly wound was healed. Let's find out who that was. On, January, on March, 30, March 30th, 1981, President Ronald Reagan is shot in the chest outside of Washington, D.C. Hotel by by the range drifter named John Hinckley Jr. That prophecy came to pass in 1981, okay? Two months after he took power, two months and 10 days to be exact, after he took power. We should have known back then who the fourth kingdom was so we could look for this prophecy. That prophecy happened. His deadly wound was healed. It was Ronald Reagan, okay? And let's see what number he was. He's one of the seven kings. Here it is. There he's number two. These are last says five have fallen, meaning they're no longer in power. One is, and the other has not yet come. He said when he come, he's going to continue only for a short time. And the beast that was, and no longer is, even he will return. That's the number eight. But Ronald Reagan is the one that was mortally wounded. It does not say in the scripture nothing about the Antichrist being mortally wounded or shot in the head. Like that movie John Hagee made, he is full of heresy. That man is full of heresy. Okay, he never told the truth. I'm talking about John Hagee. I sent him a message. He never replied. Okay? I told him, you're wrong. You are wrong for deceiving the people with that. The lies that you've been presenting them. Talking about a seven-year peace treaty with Israel and the Antichrist is going to be wounded in the head. The scripture does not say that. Okay? He's been lying to many people. He don't deceive many. Ronald Reagan was the one that was mortally wounded. There it is right there. He was not wounded in the uh, head. He was shot in the chest. It was a deadly wound. Okay? But it was healed. Okay? Just as the scripture says. And there are seven kings, of whom five have fallen, one through five is no longer in power, and one is, meaning the number six, and the other has not yet come, meaning Donald Trump. It says, and when he comes, he shall continue only for a short time. And the beast that was, talking about the number six, 
and no longer is when Donald Trump comes, it says he will return as the number eight king. You don't see Joe Biden nowhere up there in, that, in those seven kings, okay? He's not in there, okay? He's a fraud. He could be the dragon, the one that's giving out the power, because he's shapeshift too. Satan's shapeshift too. He, the scripture says uh, John saw unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So Satan is here communicating with the kings of the earth. Dressed as a man, look like a man, just like the Antichrist does. They look like human beings. That's right. Satan is one distributing the power. So Joe Biden could be the dragon. Amen. Could be. And as I stood up, and there's no, let, 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 excuse me, guys. We can finally find out the one that raised taxes. Here it is right here. Then shall stand up in his place a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom. But within a short time, he shall be destroyed neither in anger nor in battle. And in his place shall rise up a vile person to whom... They shall not bestow the royal honor, but he shall come suddenly and seize the kingdom by fraud. See, that that's what caused the rebellion, and the man of sin took power 14 days later. Okay, nobody was watching for that. Now, the one that raised taxes right here, that was prophesied, and he did it for the glory of the kingdom to make America great again. That was Donald Trump. That's right. He tried to do what he said he was going to do, okay? But then came after him a vile person. That means the man of sin took power then. Okay, and they seized the kingdom by fraud. Let's take a look. On January 23rd, 2018, the Trump terrorists imposed for the United States during Donald Trump presidency was a part of his America first economic policy to reduce the United States trade deficit by shifting American trade policy from multilateral free trade agreement to bilateral trade deals. He did to make America great again just as the scripture says, he did it for the glory of the kingdom. You see that? The man of sin came in power after him. He was in power before him, and he returned as the number eight king, just as the scripture says. Let's take a look. And there are seven kings of whom five have fallen, meaning one through five is no longer in power. You will not see them in power again. And one is, and the other has not yet come. The one is, is the number six, and the other has not yet come, is Donald Trump. It says, when he comes, he shall continue only for a short time. And the beast that was, meaning the number six, uh, uh, what's his name, Barack Obama, and no longer is when Donald Trump is, okay, he says, even he is the number eight, and he's one of the seven. Okay, he's back. There it is right there. Five have fallen, they're no longer in power. One is, and the other has not yet come. It says when he comes, he's going to continue for a short time. And the beast that was, and no longer is, he will, he will return as the number eight king. He back, snuck right in up on you. He ain't going to come announce it to you that he's the Antichrist and he back. No, he ain't going to do that. He's going to subdue three kings first. And after he subdues three kings, who can stop him after that? Nobody will be able to stop him after that. He's subduing them right now. He got Russia running out of uh, weapons right now. He's been bombing for two years, and he's getting very low in bombs, okay? They're he, they making him use all he got. They're going to take him, China, and Iran out. The scripture says it, okay? When he do that, he's coming after the saints. He's going to invade the land of Israel, and then he's coming after us. Here we go. And he said, the fourth beast, which you saw. Yeah, let me get this right. And he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom on the earth, which shall excel all other kingdoms. This is where the Antichrist rising up from, this kingdom right here, the most powerful nation in the world. He excelled more than any other nation in the world. It says, and shall devour the whole earth and trample and destroy. Look what it says. And his ten horns, or ten kings, that shall arise. And after them shall arise another, who shall exceed all former ones in wickedness. And he shall subdue three kings. See that? There it is right there. He's going to subdue three kings. It's happening right now. Right under your nose. Does everybody think he's going to go back to normal? No, it's going to get worse. When he take these out right here, he, the script says he's going to immediately invade the land of Israel. Right now, he got the people over there in Israel working with him. And when he get done with these three kings, he's going to turn. It said, the scripture says God put it in their hearts to turn on the people over there in Israel. They are not Israel. And you're going to see that here in this message, okay? They're going to turn on them, and God's going to clear that land out and bring the 12 tribes back home. That's when the 12 tribes of Israel will come home, and God will set his tabernacle among them, and they will live in peace forever and ever. Okay? Let's get down with it. 
And at the time of the end, the king of the south, that's China, shall fight against him. That's the time at the end now. Huh? Well, that's where we are right now. At the time of the end, the king of the south shall march against him, shall fight against them. And the king of the north, Russia, going to join them, march against him with chariots and horsemen and three ships and with ships. And he shall invade their land, the, the land. That means he's going to invade Russia and China. Okay? They're gonna, it's it's going to go fast because it's happening right now. Look what he's going to do after he take them down. He shall invade. He shall reach also the land of Israel. Okay? We're going to see from the scripture that God put it in their hearts to do this right here. It says God put it in their hearts to turn on them. Okay? Because they over there joining them right now. That woman is that woman that ride that beast or the people over there that call themselves Israel. And we're going to see that today. Okay? So right now, they're, she's fighting with them. They're siding with her until they get their agenda taken care of. And then God's going to put it in their hearts to turn against them. Listen at it. He shall reach also the land of Israel, and many shall be slain. But these shall be delivered out of his hand, even Edom, Moab, and the remnant of the children of Ammon. Do you see Israelites in there? No, they're not in the land. And this is going to happen at the time of the end. Remember that up there? And at the time of the end, meaning before the end, okay? Israel is not in the land. They will not return back until the time before the end, okay? We need to understand that. God's going to deliver Edom, Moab, and Ammon out of there. And everything else is the Amorites. He's going to destroy them, okay? And there are seven, and there was given to him a mouth that he might, might utter both of things and blaspheme. And power was given to him to make war for 40 and two months. He started making war February 24th, 2022. 42 months will be February 24th, well, uh, August 24th, 20, August 2025, okay? August 24th of 2025, that's his 40 months expires. So he started making war in February 2022, one year after they took power, okay? And for three and a half, 42 months from that day, it will be August the 24th of 2025. That means the Messiah should be entering the cloud around that time. I'm not going to go there and try to say a day or an hour. I don't know that. I can say what the scripture says right here. He's going to make war for 42 months. It don't say he's going to rule for 42 months. He's making war. He didn't make war until one year after he took power. Okay? He's going to make war for 42 months. After he subdued those three kings, he's going to invade the land of Israel. And then he's coming after us until Christ returns. That's the deal right there. Hello, Bubbles. Hey, Joe. Good to see you guys. Let me talk to y'all a little bit. Hello, hello, Millie. Hello, Demarius. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> hello, Leona. We already spoke, but I just said hello again. How about that? Hello, hello, hello. Amen. Amen and amen. <laughs> I don't I don't put that past you, Joseph. Uh, I don't put it. I mean, they're doing a lot of evil over there, but they got a lot of devices over there. And man couldn't come up with them technology like that. Angels taught man how to make weapons. They're still doing it today. So I have, would have to agree with you on that, brother. I would have to agree with you on that. That came from the dark world, okay? I believe you. I, I agree with that. But um, if you, I got the book. I was in the Enoch. I'm reading it right now. They, they, they don't know how that kind of man do not have that kind of knowledge to make the weapons they're making now. That stuff, they're, they're mingling with the spirits, okay? They've been doing that ever since the flood, you understand? Ever since after the flood, they started mingling with the spirits again, okay? They never stopped. Okay, and that's how they got that technology. Who can fire a missile from here and make the field goal in Chicago? You understand? Who will give you that to? A man don't have that technology. It comes from the fallen ones. Okay? I I'm, 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 I'm have to agree with you on that one. Amen. Amen. Hello, Dean. <laughs> Amen, Mark. Amen. 
Thank you, Leona. Y'all hit that button up there in the three dots and hit the like, the thumbs up is what we need. They say Iran attacked Israel. <laughs> Israel, the Israel is not in the land. I'm gonna call them who they are. The Amorites attacked Iranian uh, uh, embassy in, uh, in, 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 in Syria. And Iran retaliated against them. They are the Amorites. They're not Israel. That's right. The scripture says it too, uh, Stacy. You're 100% right. We're going to see that too. When they see him show up this time, he's already in power. He's not going to show his face until uh, he come back. When after he subdue these three kings, then he's going to show his face. Or maybe sometime during the time while he's fighting them. Um, he's going to show his face. The scripture says when everybody see him come back, they're going to wonder whose names are not written in the book of life. you right on track on that. Everybody's going to wonder. The whole world. Because they're going to know then. You know, but he's he, he, but that's when he's gonna start taking away all the religions and make one religion, and he's gonna introduce the mark. All that's coming. We, we we're approaching that time. August his last year, and we'll start this August of making war for forty two months. His forty two months will be up next year, August of making war. So he's gonna start his last year starts this August, the last hour. That's when all the he's gonna own all the military. Okay, he's going to run all the military starting August for that one hour. I've been keeping track. <laughs> I'm keeping track. Really, I'm really keeping track. He started making war February 24th, 2022. Okay, and then in February 24th, um, 2024 uh, is three years. Six months after that is August 24th. So he's going to uh, make war up until August 24th of next year. And sometime that time, during that time, God said he's going to chart the days because if he didn't, no flesh would live. We're about to go through a suffering that never, ever we thought we would go through. It's going to be a time like never before. We're about to go through that. And people just taking it lightly like it's okay. It is not okay. We are about to go through it. The last year going to, of his, him making war starts this August. Okay? This August, his last hour is that last year. That's he gonna to try to do everything he can to take everything out, get every mark, get everybody he can to take the mark. All that stuff is coming. Get ready. Okay, let's keep going. So, and he opened his mouth and blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name and his dwelling place and those who dwell in heaven. And power was given to him over every tribe and kindred. See that he's gonna rule everybody. Only the saints of God is not gonna bow down to him. And power was given to who? Look who given the power. Satan, the dragon, is given the power now. Okay? We don't rule the kingdom until Christ comes. So they got the power until Christ comes. So we can't say God, God cast them down with the power. And now the, the dragon is the one that distributing the power to the Antichrist. Look what it says. And power was given to him over every tribe, over kin and kindreds and tongues and nation. And it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. He's going to do that until Christ comes. So there's no such thing as a pre-tribulation rapture. People need to stop talking like that. And that's a lie. Don't believe the lie. And all who dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Those who dwell, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You see that? The whole world going to worship him. Only those whose names are written in the book of life will not bow down to him. Okay? And we can't just go around thinking our name bit, uh, written in the book of life. We got to get our name written in the book of life. And this is how you do it. Being born of water and the spirit. And it all starts right here in the words of the Messiah. This is how you get saved. This is how you get your name written in the book of life. Amen. Let's keep going. And the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. See there? He's not human, okay? He came up during the time the ten horns were formed. We saw that, okay? And go into perdition. He have access to hell. The scripture call him the son of perdition. Hell is a living thing, okay? Hell is alive, okay? And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life of the Lamb, book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and, and is not and yet is. See that? It still say he was in power, is not when Donald Trump was in power, and then he came back. But all the people, just like uh, Stacy said earlier, that they're going to uh, 
They're going to wonder, just like we just talked about. When they see him come back this time, he's already back. He ain't going to show his face until he subdued those three kings. But he's going to let everybody, the whole world, know that he's in power. And that's when everybody's going to wonder then. They're going to wonder. The whole world going to wonder, okay? Because he's going to rule the whole world. <laughs> that's right. He says he's going to have all power over every nation, over every tongue, kinders, and tongues. But only that, the saints of God will not bow down to him. Okay, so we're about to hit, hit those times right now. And people just don't see it. They, they like a wait over here in America until something happen. And that's sad. That's really bad. You know, that's really bad. I feel bad for them. You know, and it's going to be trying to scramble to try to watch what's going on and try to keep, keep yourself protected and then try to get yourself saved. That's a whole lot. You're going to be a whole lot going on. You're going to be running for your life. You're going to try to be starving and hungry. And you're going to try to get saved at the same time. That's going to be, you're going to be overwhelmed. Get it now. <laughs> okay? Get it now. Stop playing around. Amen. People need to get it now. They're going to be in shock, just like Stacy said. You're right, uh, Stacy. Let's keep going. Here it is. And he compelled all, both small and great, rich and poor, freemen and slaves, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their forehead, or in their forehead. And no man, that no man might buy or sell unless he who had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of the name of a man, and his number is 666. You see that? He says, let him who has wisdom count. You got to count. If you know how to count, you can count his number. Let him who has wisdom, has understanding, count the number of the beast. All you got to do is count his number. It's going to show you. His number is going to total up to be 666. Let's take a look. You got to count eight heads. It was seven heads. So you got to count all eight. Okay? But you got to start with the horns because that's the way it was presented in the scripture. Count with the, the ten horns first. And then the eight heads. Three times six. There he is. You see that? There it is right there. You got to count his number. Okay? His number going to total up to be that right there. <laughs> okay? Eight to ten horns and eight heads. Three times six equal 18. But well, that's his number. God told me in a dream, when you see this number right here, that's Satan's number. That's what God told me in a dream. 18. Amen. Let me read y'all's question. Amen. Based upon um, the scriptures, um, he's going to rule for 42 months. Okay, they're going to give their power to him for one month. Sometimes one, it tells us in the scripture, that's how God determined one hour, one week. One week could be one, one year as well. And from my experience, and from, from, from in my personal life, that's how it works. Uh, when it says one week or one hour, it always means one year, okay? Um, you know, or, or seven weeks will be seven years, okay? So it's, it all lines up the same way. Uh, Ryan's, uh, Virgie Ryan's. But yeah, uh, they're going to rule with him for one hour. And they're not ruling with him yet. He's going to rule, they're going to rule with him in that very last hour until Christ come. That's how I get that one hour mainly. Because they're going to rule with him and fight against the saints for the, around the whole world. Until Christ come, that last hour of his rule, of him making war, okay? That's what that means. And uh, throughout Daniel, you can see that one hour or uh, seven, uh, seven weeks or one week also signify one hour or seven, uh, one year or seven years, okay? It always, God always, his word always talked like that. So that's how that, that was determined, okay? Let's keep going. So we know now he can build all both small and great. That's what it says. He's going to put on the temple the abomination that make desolate. Okay, it's not talking about no temple. He's going to put on the temple on no building over there in, in the Middle East. Okay, they're waiting on the building to be, uh, the third temple to be built, and he's going to put something on. That's not what it's talking about. He's going to put the mark of the beast on the people. Okay, so that's what he's talking about. He said he's going to, and he compelled all, both small and great, rich and poor, freemen and slaves to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. 
and that no man might buy or sell. See, the church is supposed to be getting ready for this right here. We're supposed to be being ready. We're supposed to have our warehouses and everything years back, okay? We were supposed to be stocked, waiting, rather than putting that money in their banks. And, and, and God's telling us, don't store up in the bank. He tells us, don't do that. He said, don't do not store up your money in the ground or a place where rust and malt destroy us. They didn't have banks back then. We were supposed to have storehouses all over this country for the church. But they put it in the bank. They shut the bank down. You can't get a dime. You understand? That's sick. These men are not thinking about you and caring about you and you putting your money in there, giving them 10% of your money, which you should not be, but you're doing it anyway. But they should have storehouses, okay? Unless he who had the mark of the beast or the nut. Let me read that again. That no man might buy or sell unless he who had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. There's three things there. You see that? And here's wisdom. Let him who has understanding count. Tell him you to count. Count the ten horns and the seven heads. And his number going to total up to be that. Three, six, six. Right there, right there. Amen. And look what it says. For it is the number of the name of a man. He has the number of man and the name of a man. He's the number six. And he has the name of a human being. And he's not human. Okay. Here we go. Let me get to the next message, guys. We're going to go through the, the woman that rides the beast now. The woman that rides that beast, that beast is America. Okay, we're talking about the fourth kingdom. She, there's a woman that rides her, that fourth kingdom. And she's the one over there now uh, about to get it on with Iran. That's the woman who called herself Israel. We're about to find that out from the scriptures. So people can put the rest, New York. The scripture tells us the woman is that, uh, that very woman that killed all the prophets. New York didn't kill no prophets. <laughs> that woman that rides the beast, she killed the prophets. She killed the martyrs of Christ. She also crucified Christ. The scripture tells us who she is. Let's find out. There she is. Look at there. Mystery Babylon. Here it is. So this is, the, this is the beast that she's riding right here. Okay? So we just went over that. And as I stood on the sand of the shore, it's talking about the fourth kingdom. She rides that fourth kingdom. Okay? And she, she the one that got the whole world... To look, look at this kingdom, I'm just going to briefly go over this. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And it had two horns like a lamb, calling himself Israel, and spoke like a dragon, always bullying people, okay? And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. There's only one nation that exercised all the power of the United States, and that's them, okay? And I'm going to prove it. And he caused the earth and those who dwell therein to worship the first beast before him, whose deadly wound was healed. So what wound was healed in that kingdom was America, whose deadly wound was healed. One of the, the seven heads were wounded. So she exercised the power of that kingdom, the one who had the one of its leaders mortally wounded, but the deadly wound was healed. So that's what it's telling us. So she exercised all the power of the United States, okay? And that's them who over there call themselves Israel. We're going to find out right now that they are not Israel, okay? And he performed great wonders to such an extent that he can even make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. When they dropped that bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they it's telling us she exercised that power and she he the one that made that bomb and gave it to America. When America dropped that bomb, everybody looked over here to the United States of America. It started right here. And look what it says. He performed such wonders to great extent even make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. So she caused the whole earth and those who dwell in to look over here to America. It was Israel. People over there called themselves Israel. Got, they created that bomb. When that bomb dropped, the whole world turned their head over here to America and wanted to come and be and live the American dream. It started over there, okay? Beguiling those who dwell upon the earth to make an image to the beast, meaning the image is already here. They're going to put 21 of them in America. Okay, started in Phoenix, Arizona. They said they was going to put them up in, 20, in uh, 2021. I knew they would. that was too early. They're going to put them up by the end of this year or beginning of next year. They're going to start putting those images up, okay? They got them. They are already here. 21 of them going up in America. Let's read that again. Beguiling those who dwell up on the earth to make an image to the beast. Talking about to America, okay? Not talking about to the Antichrist, okay? Which had the wound by a sword and yet lived. Talking about America. Okay, and he had power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak 
that the, that the image of the boat should both speak and cause all who would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Do you see that? So that's coming. That's coming between now and the beginning of next year. Okay, you'll see it right here in America. All right, let's keep going. Then came one of the seven angels which had the seven bowls and talked with me saying, Come, I will show you the condemnation of the great heart who sits upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her adultery. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, inscribed with many words of blaspheme, having seven heads and ten horns. So the woman that's riding the beast, that beast is the one that has the seven heads and the ten horns, which is America. Okay, it's telling us who, that who, who, who the beast is that she's riding. She's riding America, and there's only one nation that exercised the authority of America, and that's those who call themselves Israel and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. I'm going to prove it to you. Bear with me. Here we go. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication on earth. And upon her forehead was a name written that not all could understand, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, an abomination of the earth. And I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yeshua. And when I saw her, I wondered with great amazement. And the angel said to me, why do you wonder? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and ten horns. So the beast would uncover the beast. Now we're about to cover the woman who, care, who the beast is carrying, okay? It says this woman is arrayed in purple and scarlet, adorned with precious golds and stones and pearls, having a golden cup of her hand full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication on earth. Fornication is when she done spread the word, a false word. We covered that yesterday. When we spread a false word, somebody received that false word, that person committed a fornication with you spiritually. And when that person going to tell somebody that false word, that's adultery, okay? So it's very careful about our words. That's why we got to always prove stuff with Scripture when we're talking about the word, okay? We got to always be sound. Prove it with Scripture. That's what I've been doing, okay? And upon her forehead was a name written that not all could understand. Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, an abomination of the earth. Okay, John got to see what was in her heart. That's where your heart is, you know, your forehead. It's not talking about the heart in your chest. Okay, that heart pumped blood through the body. But the heart is the mind. He got to see, John saw what was in her heart. Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots. She's an abomination of the earth. Look what he said. And I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints, meaning she killed all the prophets, the same people that killed the prophets of old. It's telling you she's drunk with their blood. And the blood of the martyrs of Yeshua, you'll see also that she killed Christ. The same people that crucified Christ, and they was not Israelites, okay? And when I saw her, I wondered with great amazement. And the angel said to me, I will tell you, why do you wonder? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. Let's find out. And he said to me, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Now, if you look over there and see where the land of Israel sits, she's surrounded by different nations. That's the water. When you dream about a large body of water, it's showing you a large body of people. If you see a flood of water coming in, that's a flood of people coming in. So when you dream that, that's what John is telling us right here, that the waters which you saw, where the harlot says, these are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So it's identifying the water as peoples, different nations, okay? And the ten horns and the beast which you saw, listen at this part, shall hate the harlot and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to do his will and to be of one accord and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. You see that? And the woman whom you saw is that great city. There's only one great city in the Bible that's identified as a great city, and that's Jerusalem. Okay? It's the only city in the world that God identified as the great city. Okay, and we'll prove it to you that this is that lady that riding that beast. That beast is America, okay, which has dominion over the kings of the earth. Now, let's break it down. 
We done covered the waters. The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are people and multitudes and nations in the tongue. So we know that's the definition that she's surrounded by. Now listen at this. And the ten horns and the beast which you saw, talking about America. And the ten horns, okay, which is NATO, which you saw shall hate the harlot and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. This is God's judgment on her to clear the land to bring the 12 tribes back. We'll see all that too. Okay, but this is the, she working with them right now. But look what God did. God had them to turn on her. For God has put it into their hearts to do his will and to be of one accord and to give their kingdom to the beast. Okay, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. That's why he did it. He's going to use NATO and the ten horns, the ten horns in the U.S. to clear that land out to bring his tribe back. And after that, that's when the battle begins. God is going to fight with, with them then. He's going to fight with the ten horns in America. After that, okay? And the woman whom you saw is that great city. We're going to look and see who that great city is. And that is Jerusalem. Let's take a look. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them. And their dead bodies shall be up on the street of the great city. What well, that's that? It's talking about the two witnesses. They're going to kill the two witnesses over there in the street. They're going to, they're going to be in the, on the streets of Jerusalem for three and a half days. Or something like that, I believe, three and a half days. And their dead body shall be up on the street of the great city. The great city is Jerusalem, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Was our Lord crucified in New York? No. A lot of people say this New York is Babylon. Uh, California, it's not talking about a land. It's talking about a people. Okay? That great city is a people where our Lord was crucified. It's identifying her as Sodom and Egypt, <laughs> spiritually called that, where also our Lord was crucified. You see that? It tells us plainly who she is. If that's not good enough, bear with me. I have more. <laughs> Here it is. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted by his glory. And he cried with a mighty voice, saying, Babylon the great have fallen and has become a habitation of those possessed with devils, telling us who they are. They are possessed with devils. Look at that, that. These people are evil. They've been worshiping devils ever since Nimrod. This is Nimrod's uncle is who they are. And I'm going to prove it to you here. I'm going to show you exactly who these people are. Mystery Babylon. I'm going to show you that she's Nimrod's uncle. Nimrod started off sacrificing children to the fire, to Baal, and eating human flesh and drinking human blood. Now, Nam his Namorites are doing the same thing. That's who they are. Okay, let me read that again. And he cried with a mighty voice saying, Babylon the great has fallen and has become a habitation of those possessed with devils and the shelter of every foul spirit. These are all spirits. And the shelter of every unclean and detestable bird and the shelter of every unclean and loathsome wild beast because all nations have drunk of the wine of her wrath. What she's doing over there right now? Every war that started, the scripture tells us that she the one started and riding the beast with America, bringing America in these wars. She's responsible for all who was slain on the earth, and we're going to see that from the scripture. Those people over there who call themselves Israel is responsible for all that blood that's been shed around the world. And I'm going to show you that in the scripture. Because all nations have drunk of the wine of her wrath. You see that? She's doing it right now. And the kings of the earth have committed adultery with her. So they received the false word and telling the citizens that these people are Israel and they're going to fight and protect Israel. Okay? So the kings of the earth have committed adultery by doing that. Okay? Saying that they're Israel and they are not with her. Okay? And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the power of her trade. Let's keep going. And I heard another voice from you. I'm going to read y'all a question. Bear with me, guys. Don't, don't, don't get discouraged. I'm going to read every question you got on this platform. I just got to get to a certain point. Bear with me. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, O my people. We just saw he's going to deliver Edom, Moab, and Ammon out of there. He did not mention the Israelites, okay? He's going to bring them back after he destroyed them people that's in there and burn that land. He's got to purge the land, he said. He's going to purge it with fire, and then he's going to bring the 12 tribes back, okay? And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, O my people. So that you may not become partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. For God, for her sins have reached up to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquity. Reward her even as she has reward to, rewarded you, 
and return to her a double portion according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, mixed for her double, she's going to get the double of what she have done around the world. God, her sin reached up to heaven. God told Abraham, the iniquity of the Amorites are not yet full. When that, 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 when that iniquity get full, iniquity means violence. When her violence is reached and then got full, God is going to judge her. That's what's about to happen. He's going to subdue three kings and then he's going to invade her and this one that's going to happen. So when you see this happening, know that they are not Israel. Okay? Let's keep going. For as much as she has glorified herself and lived deliciously, give her so much torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I said a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore her plague shall come in one day. Death and mourning and famine, and she shall be burned with fire. See, God going to purge the land. For might is the Lord God who judges her. God is judging her. her she thinks she's getting away. Now, how could we side with a people that are so wicked and killing people all the time and calling them the people of God? Don't mess with Israel. Israel is not there. Israel is scattered among the nations still. God says he's going to gather them from the four corners of the world and bring them back after the land is purged. Not man nor beast will be in that land when the twelve tribes return home. Here we go. Rejoice over her, O heaven. Look what he says. And holy apostles and prophets. God saying rejoice over her when she start burning. He's saying, O holy apostles and the prophets. Okay. For God has avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea saying, So shall that great city Babylon. Talking about the people. It's not talking about a land. So shall that great city Babylon be overthrown with violence and shall be found no more at all. He's going to destroy those people. Okay, they are the Amorites, the descendants of Ham. Okay, the Canaan. Those are the people that God wanted to destroy because they never want, want God. Read Ezekiel chapter 16. God tried to save those people. And, and the sound of harpers and musicians and singers and trumpeters shall not be heard in you again. And no craftsman or whatever craft he may be shall be found anymore in you. So there will be none of these people existing out of that race of people. He's going to destroy them. He's, he tried to save them through the prophets. He tried to save them through Christ. And the last time he's going to try to save them is when the two witnesses over there, they're going to, the Antichrist is going to kill them over there. But these people still not going to want those two witnesses, don't, don't want their words. They, they will not receive God. They are devil worshipers, okay? And the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fail. That's when, the, when, when you see they divide that land over there in three parts, that's when the economy is going to crash worldwide. That's what it's telling us. Look what it says. And the cities of the nation, and the great city was divided into three parts. When they do that, look what's going to happen. And the cities of the nations fail. That's when all the economies around the world is going to crash. So you ain't got to worry about when the economy is going to crash until you see this happen. Okay? When they divide that great city. That's when it's going to crash. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God. God set that as a marker for him to remember, to judge her, okay? To give to her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. You see that? Many people go around saying, you better not divide God's land. You better not divide God's land. God has set that as a marker, okay? To remind him, to, mark, to judge these people, to pour his wrath upon them. You see that? You hear so many preachers, don't divide God's land, don't divide God's name, and they don't see what God done did here. God done put that as a marker to judge them, okay? He's going to pour his wrath upon them when that happens, okay? Here we go. And the light of a lamp shall shine no more at all in you, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in you. For your merchants were the great men of the earth, for by your sorceries were all nations deceived. They deceived the whole world with their sorceries. Let's find out what that means. Let's take a look. Sorcery is a derivative of the Greek word formakia. And this is the word from which we get the word formacy. Sorcery also implies witchcraft, the luring of your soul with spells and rituals, and to break your connection between you and your spirit to God because they know that your body is the true temple of the living God. So sorcery is a drug. They want to put in your body and defile the temple of God. They know that your body is the temple of God. 
When they brought that vaccine, they released that stuff in the air, gave people corona, and came up with a solution called the coronavirus vaccine. And they did this to defile the temple of God, okay? They hate God. They hate us. They hate all mankind. They love to kill people and sacrifice the devil. They start wars so that they can kill people. Those are human sacrifices. Okay, every time you see a war start, they started it. Scripture says they the one that started these wars. Look what it says. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seven seals, and I heard as it was the voice of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come out of her. Come and see, I'm sorry. And I looked, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given to him. And he went forth, conquering and to conquer. That's what they did with the coronavirus. Look what God told me that morning on December 6th, 2020, as I was waking up, he gave me, before I woke up, he gave me an assignment to do, to go to Seattle Vista Church, to, to give them one more chance to come out and hear what I had to say. And he told me after he said that, he said the white horse is released today. That happened December 6, 2020. The white horse was released on that day. Now look what happened in this verse. It says, I looked and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him had a bow and a crown was given to him. Now we need to search and find out what that means. What does the bow mean and what is the crown? Let's take a look. The Greek word for crown is, there's no coincidence in that. You see that? That's the Greek word for crown, corona. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> and the Greek word for bow is toxic. You know, bow has a spear, like a point of a spear at the end of it, like a syringe, okay? It's toxic, okay? And the Greek word for two ox and uh, two ox on is toxic. It was a corona toxin. It was to cut your days short. It wanted, they wanted deep, that was a depopulation agenda. It said the white horse went forth to conquer and conquering and to conquer. Okay, the next time he's coming with the mark of the beast. He's coming back one more time. Okay, the scripture says he went forth conquering and he's coming back this time to conquer. Don't put nothing in your body from the government. The government don't worship God. You don't take nothing in your body from nobody's government. You die for this right here. You lay your life down for this, okay? You don't put nothing in your body. Let me read y'all's question before I go on. Okay. I don't believe one saying, no, ain't that don't, the scripture, if you read in, I'm just going to give you one scripture. Read in uh, John chapter uh, 15. <laughs> Every branch in me, this is him right here, <laughs> in the word, that does not bear fruit will be cut down, or cut down and cast into the fire. That's a branch. We are the branches. He said, he's the vine. This is the vine. And we are the branches. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he cuts off. The Father cuts off and casts into the fire. He said, unless we abide in him and we and we, we, we will be cut off as a branch which is withered, that they cast into the fire. And then you look at Revelation chapter 3. I think it's the church of Sardis. He said, uh, you have defiled your garments. He said, you have a few members who have not defiled your garments. They will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes, he said next. The ones who don't spotted their garments, he said, he who overcomes, the same shall walk with me in white robes, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life. I told that to a pastor at Seattle Vista Church, and he said, that sounds like you can get your name blotted out of the book of life. And he kept teaching that you can't lose your salvation, and that's a lie. The scripture tells us throughout the scripture, we have to endure until the end, okay? We have to keep ourselves sanctified and unspotted from the world. That's why he sent the word to keep us sanctified. That's why we have to follow him every day, speaking him out of our mouth to keep ourselves washed and clean every day. And if we don't do that, we can end up losing our salvation. We can, we can start back going back doing the, in the world. So don't believe that lie that you can't lose your salvation. That's a lie, okay? You can lose your salvation. We, through the scripture, it tells us, he who will do us to the end shall save, shall be saved. Who are the two witnesses? I don't know. I saw them in my dream twice, and I didn't get to see their faces. I saw their garments, and they was waiting. I saw them waiting twice. They both, each time they were waiting, and the Lord was there with them, you know. And uh, But the Lord came for a purpose concerning something that he wanted me to see, but I saw them. They was waiting, Okay. But I don't know who they are. Um, Stacy, all you do is stay focused and, and work out your own salvation. 
Okay, don't get caught up worried about nobody else. I have family. I love my family. God knows I do. But I have to stay focused. I try to reach as many as I can. Uh, and I'm not just going to say who they are because some of them be watching my videos sometimes and I don't want to offend somebody. But uh, I've been trying to reach them and I believe, I know God, he, he will answer my prayer. I'm pleading the blood over my children and my grandchildren. That's my family and I love my family, but I have to stay focused. And you do too, okay? Stay with it. Okay, God knows how to save. We can't. God saves. Yeah, um, the people that want the rapture, they've been deceived. And there's no scripture in that. This is where they get that word from, uh, pre-tribulation rapture. He says he will deliver us from the hour of temptation which shall come upon the whole world. That's not delivering us from the great suffering that shall come upon the whole world. Temptation is when we're being tempted. There's going to be a, a great temptation that's going to be powerful enough to make man sin against God. Okay? Or, or blaspheme God. That's going to be a temptation. Okay, to blaspheme against God. He said he's going to deliver us from that. Okay? So we don't want to fall into that, start blaspheming God because of what we're going through. That's going to be the great temptation that's going to come up on the whole world. Okay? And we just saw what the scripture says, the Antichrist is going to prevail against us until Christ comes. So there's no pre-tribulation rapture. They need to prepare themselves. And they, even if they wasn't, they're not ready for Christ because they're not in these words right here. They're just going to say the prayer and believe they saved. And they need to know how to get saved, uh, like you have found out being on this platform. You have to be born again to be saved, okay? And born again is not saying a prayer. You don't get born again like that. <laughs> Can't nobody get born again like that. Hello, hola. Hola, uh, Demiris, I'm, I'm just reading the questions. I'm, I'm so sure you're going to ask something. I'm going to find what you said. Wow, you heard Putin just announce a military draft. They're doing it right now. They, they, those people over there in the land of Israel right now bombing. They're about to attack Iran. They're going to put four tankers in the air to refuel while they're up there. So they're going to go over there. They're on their way over there right now, look like, to me. Because they got four tankers refueled, ready to refuel in the air. They're already up. And the fighter jets have taken off. So they're about to go over there and hit Iran. So they're going to take down three kingdoms. But China's going to be the first one to launch on America. Scripture says it. <laughs> Just watch for that. Okay? Okay, I covered that. That's right, we don't. Okay, so nobody's saying too much now. Nope. That's right, holiness. Don't move. You stay right where you are. <laughs> Don't go out there in the desert. Hello, uh, Damaris. I saw that once, I believe. Okay. Yeah, I ran in a, I ran, uh, uh, attacked Israel after Israel attacked Iran. Um, Dean, that's what happened, you know. So you guys, um, they focus. We are entering by, by August. We know we entering that last hour of him making war, and that means in that last hour it's going to be bad. And God said, Christ said, if the Father had not shortened the days, no flesh would live. So we about to approach that time in that last hour, starting August. Okay, this year we're entering that last hour of him making war. He's going to make war for 42 months. Okay, he ain't going to make war beyond that. So sometime during that time, the Lord going to come because if not, if he hadn't shortened the days, no flesh would live. So that's how bad it's going to be for everybody. Okay, so we need to prepare for that. Okay? Amen. Um, I, I just answered that, Lynn. Christ going to come. Okay, answer, ask the question. Oh, uh, Jay. Um, um, Christ's going to come during the time he's prevailing against us all uh, then. And he's not coming before then. Um, he's going he gonna to prevail. Is that, we, read Daniel chapter 7, verse 21 and verse 22. Okay? It's right there telling us when. Christ's going to come and that, the Antichrist is going to prevail against us until that happens. 
Okay, till Christ comes. So ain't no pre for Christ coming to get us and all that stuff. When he comes, we're going to change into our glorified body and we will have power. And, and we're going to be with him then. Okay, so we're going to be fighting with him. I believe where I understand the scripture says those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. When he comes, we're going to change. We're going to be sons of God again. And we will have that same power. And we'll be able to take down the evil ones with him. So there it is. That those who are with him, he's going to come and smite the Antichrist. He's going to uh, uh, take him out and cast him into the lake of fire. And uh, all the host of armies that he's going to have with him, we're going to deal with all that too. Though uh, I feel bad about the people that are in there thinking they're doing the right thing, serving their country. God didn't create them to serve no country. He created them to serve the living God himself. You know, they, We're not created to serve no country. Okay? We're not supposed to uh, bow down to that stuff. You know, not even partake in it. Okay? Amen. Praise the Lord. Salvation is 100% given, but you got to go and work for it. You don't get it just free. He, he gave it free, but you got to work for it. This is how you buy it. You got to abide in him and he in you. This is Christ, the word. Okay, this is how you get saved. The human body was the blood sacrifice, but the word is what we wash, be sanctified, and born of water of the word. Okay, being born again by the word of God, this is what it means, the words of Christ. This is how we get born again. You got to have this to get that salvation. Okay, the forgiveness of sin don't apply to you until you get baptized in the name. This is being baptized in the name. His name is the word of God. When it says be baptized in the name of Yeshua, it's not telling you to be baptized in Yeshua's name. It says to be baptized in the name of him, meaning the word of God. Okay, it's all bringing you to God. This is how you get saved, 100%. Let's keep going, guys. COVID spelled backwards. So we see, let me go back over here. You see that corona, that crown was given to him, and that crown signifies corona. That's no coincidence. I want you to see that, okay? And the word boy means toxic, okay? And that's a corona toxic. It was something to hurt you, okay? It's not good for you, all right? And the spell COVID backwards is uh, devak. And devak in Hebrew means possession of evil spirits, okay? You see that? Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's read the next one, okay? And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints. So we covered this up here. The sorcery, it did not come out of China. Like they said, the China virus, it came out of Jerusalem. It says she the one that invented that. Sorcery, were all nations deceived by, by her sorcery. And that's what she did. She introduced that vaccine and made it look like America was doing it. Uh, we're trying to make it. She the one did that, okay? And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all who were slain upon the earth. She's behind all the wars, it's telling you. People don't see that, okay? Those people that call themselves Israel over there, they are devil worshipers. The, that whole administration, these people are evil, okay? And they're riding the beast, and the beast got its power from the dragon. They're all working together carrying out the Luciferian agenda. They all gather down there in Bohemian Grove every year to worship their God, okay? And yet people still run down and vote for them, okay? They worship their God who is the devil, okay? Here we go. Go and tell that fox, behold, I cast out devils and heal today and tomorrow, and I will leave on the third day I will be finished. But I must do my work today and tomorrow and I will leave the next day because it is impossible. This is what he said. Because it is impossible that a prophet should perish outside of Jerusalem. That means a prophet of God has to die in Jerusalem. Now let's back it up. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all who was slain upon the earth. Talking about her who killed the prophets. There she is right there. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Murderers of the prophets and stoners of those who are sent to her. Jerusalem is the people, the great city. It's not talking about the land. It's called the land Jerusalem, and then you have the people Jerusalem. But he's telling them, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, murderers of the prophets and stoners of those who are sent to her. How many times I long to gather your children together as a hen, gather her chickens under her wings, but you were not willing. You see that? 
God been trying to save them ever since Ezekiel, Jeremiah. They stoned the prophets and killed them. They killed the martyrs of Christ. They even crucified our Lord. When God sent the prophets to prophesy to Jerusalem, he's talking about the Amorites. He tried to save them. Okay, we'll see who they are here in a minute, okay? And then when he wanted to prophesy to uh, uh, Israel, he would send the prophets to Israel and say, Hear, O Israel, thus says the Lord God. And the same thing with Judah. Hear, O Judah, thus says the Lord God. That's how the prophet would identify them to specifically tell them what God said concerning them. And he did the same thing with Jerusalem. Jerusalem are not Israelites, okay? They are the Amorites, and you're about to see that right now. Here we go. And again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, make known to Jerusalem her abomination and say, Thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, Your root and your nativity is of the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. You see that? It's not talking about the Israel. The Amorites came from uh, Canaan. See that? Canaan is the one that was first in the land of Israel. It was called the land of Canaan. Okay? Canaan is uh, Nimrod's uncle. Okay, we'll see that as we go on here in a minute too. Okay, Nimrod, the beginning of devil worshiping, began it with him. In Canaan, it's mystery Babylon. Nimrod was ancient Babylon. They're the same people. <laughs> you see that? They're the same people. They're devil worshipers. They always have worshiped the devil. Okay, they love to kill people. They offer human sacrifice. That's the reason why they always provoke wars. And that woman rides that beast, which is America, and take America into war. Because they have to sacrifice those men that die on the battlefield. Those are human sacrifices. Okay? She's responsible for all who were slain upon the earth. We just saw that. Okay? Here we go. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man will be delivered to the high priest and the scribes. And they will condemn him to death. And they will deliver him to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and scourge him and crucify him. And on the third day he will rise up. They also crucified the Messiah. <coughs> Jerusalem did that. Okay? The Amorites, okay, the descendants of Canaan, okay, and Canaan was Ham's firstborn. All right, Abraham did not come from Ham. Abraham came from Shem, okay, and Ham was the one with the bad seed. Those are the cursed people, okay, just so you know. Here we go. We'll see that as we go on too. And the ten horns and the beast which you saw shall hate the harlot and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Talking about Jerusalem. Okay, that's who he's talking about. And God, for God has put it into their hearts to do his will and to be of one accord and to give, his, give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman whom you saw is that great city. You see that? <laughs> which, is, which has dominion over the kings of the earth. Talking about Jerusalem. See that? Mr. Babylon is not a land. It's talking about a people. That did kill the prophets. The, the New York didn't kill no prophets. New York did not kill the martyrs of Christ. New York did not crucify our Lord. Okay? These people did. That great city. He called them a great city. Okay? They're killing over there right now. Going and, and, and hit somebody's stuff and tell them they can't hit them back. Okay? They're doing it right now. Here it is. And again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Make known to Jerusalem. Talking about her, the people. Her abomination say, thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, your root and your nativity is of the land of Canaan. Canaan is their dad, okay? And Canaan is Ham's firstborn son, okay? Canaan is also Nimrod's uncle, okay? Your father was a Amorite, your mother Hittite, the same bloodline, okay? Let's take a look. See, this is, these are the bloodlines right here. Now, these are the descendants of the sons of Noah. We all came from these three right here. We have Shem. That's where Abraham came from. All right? That's where the 12 tribes come from here. Ham, that's the evil people. Okay? God did not say he offered uh, salvation to them, but yet he did try to give it to them. And they did not receive it. Okay? And then we have Jaspheth, which is the Gentiles. So, salvation is given to the Gentiles. He did not mention Ham, but he always sent the prophets to try to save them. And he tried to bring them. He told them, I want to gather your children as a hen, gather her chickens. But you would not. They never would come to God. Never. Okay? We need to understand that. So we have Shem, where the 12 tribes come from. Ham is where the Amorites and all the bad people come from. And Japheth is the Gentiles. We see that? That's right. Amen. To them, a son born after the flood. Okay? 
And the sons of Japheth was Golmar, Mongolia, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, Tiras, and the sons of Gomer was Ashkenaz, Differ, and Tugrama. And the sons of Javan, Elisha, Tarish, I can't pronounce that, China, and Duranum. Okay, by these were the islands of the Gentiles divided into their land. Okay, these are the Gentiles. Salvation is offered to the Gentiles. Okay, you read in Ephesians and Galatians. Okay. By these were the islands divided into their lands and everyone after their tongue and their families in their nation. Now here's the son of Ham right here. And the sons of Ham was Cush. Cush is Nimrod's dad. Okay, we'll see that here in a minute. Marism, Put, and Canaan. Canaan is where everybody bad came from. All of these has some bad people in it right here. Okay, but it all came from Ham. Okay, let's take a look. And Cush begot Nimrod. See, Cush and Canaan. Uh, brothers. See, Cush and Canaan. Canaan and Nimrite, the Amorites came from Canaan. Okay, those are the people that's over there now. We'll see that here in a minute. Let's take a look. Okay, so Cush begot Nimrod. Okay, and he began to be a mighty hunter on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod was a mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babylon. So he was ancient Babylon, and his, his, his uncle is mystery Babylon, that great city. Same people, okay? That's what we need to understand. And the Canaanites, and Canaan begot Sidon, his firstborn, and Heat, and the Jebusites, the Amorites, and the Gergesites. These are the bad people that's over there right now, doing all the killing, riding a woman right now. God told Abraham concerning these right here, the Amorites. He said, he said, after four centuries, he will bring them back. During the time Christ is going to return and when the 12, 12 tribes are going to come back. And then he said, the, the iniquity of the Amorites are not yet full. Okay, he got to get the ten horns together. In order for his iniquity to be full, they got to have the power of the ten horns, meaning all the militaries of the world. And they're going to gather to fight against Christ. During the time when God bring the 12 tribes back, that's when the Amorites' iniquity will be expired. Okay? You see that? Plain and simple. And the borders went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom unto the south side of the Jebusites. The same is Jerusalem. Okay? The, the Jebusites, the Gergesites, and the Amorites are the same people. And they were all living in the area. That's who David fought against. That's who Saul fought against. That's who all God's king fought against these people right here in their own land. Okay? As for the Jebusites, the, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the children of Judah could not drive them out. But the Jebusites dwelt among the descendants of Judah at Jerusalem to this day. Every time God drove, drove the 12 tribes out of the land, he left the Jebusites, the Gergesites, and the Amorites stayed in that land. They were the descendants of Canaan. They did not go anywhere. God just drove the 12 tribes of Israel out. And they are in there now. When God sent Rome in there on on the 9th of Av in 70 AD to drive the Israelites out, they left these people there and they are still there to this day. Okay? These are those who are possessed with devils and every foul spirit and then they call themselves Jews and Christ said they are the synagogue of Satan. Here we go. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, murderers of the prophets. He's talking to them. They killed the prophets of God and yet God still had mercy on them and tried to save them. Okay? Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Murderers of the prophets and stoners of those who are sent to her. How many times I long to gather your children together as a hen gathered her chickens under her wing, but you were not willing. Behold, your house will be left to you desolate, meaning that land is going to be desolate before the 12 tribe return. Okay, he will prophesy in the den. Desolate means void, nothing there. Okay, and I, and you shall not, and I say to you that you shall not see me until you say, Blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. Here we go. And, the, and to the angel of the church of Smyrna, write these things, says, The first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know your works and your suffering and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blaspheme of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. It was all written for us to know and understand what we're facing and who's causing all the havoc upon the earth. And it is Jerusalem. Now you know who the mystery Babylon is. Okay, Jay, I couldn't get to your question over there. 
I'll answer your question here in a minute. Let me go through this and see what I would have preferred you posted it on here because I don't have to try to switch over there and answer your question while I'm doing it live. Um, so please stop trying to, don't try to draw me off over, for you over here. Put it on here. I would like that so I can share on it, okay? If you don't want me to share on it, I won't say anything. I'll just read it and then talk about it. Not share, but talk. <laughs> okay? The revival is going to take place. The Lord showed me to get ready, and I've been, I've been running into some brick walls. Everything be coming my way to stop me and everything, but it's coming. It's going to happen soon, 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 soon. And that's what he showed me. Um, the people that are in power right now, they don't, they don't want me in the church. And they don't want you to have this, the people to have this word. And uh, so God has to bring a storm. So when the storm comes, I'm hoping I can get, get, get everything started before the storm comes because the storm is going to be powerful. It's going to be so bad and hard. Uh, it's going to affect everybody. But those who won't let me in, he gonna, they, done, they done lost their soul, okay? They have lost their salvation. They, they've never had it, but they had, they had a chance to get it. So it'll be easier for Sodom and Gomorrah on the Day of Judgment than for those people at Salem Mr. Church. I'm talking about the leadership. Um, El Paso, Texas. Um, that's where he sent me to. And they won't let me in. So he's going to do something about it. <laughs> it's coming. So revival going to start all over the country. I'm coming your way. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm not, I already got my assignment. I can say that I'm not allowed to go west because God said he's drawing all his people from the west coast this way. Okay, so if you get a prompt or a dream or something, God's laying on your heart to leave, he's telling you to get out. So if you're in the West Coast, so I'm not to go that way. He revealed it to me more than one time. I have the revival message. I'm the one he chose to present that message. I am that person. I'm not going to talk any more about that, but, you know, uh, I'm the one he sent. And, he, you know, I have the revival message. And when that time comes, you will know about it because, you know, God show up powerful when he shows up. He don't just send somebody to talk to you and preach it. He performs signs, miracles, and wonders. That's how God operates. It is not fake. Okay? So you'll know. Okay? Now I can't do anything until he opened that door. Okay? So I know it's coming. He got me getting ready. I've been getting ready every day. But I had a lot of road bumps to, to slow me down. I did. I did. I really did. So, uh, but I'm back on my feet again. <laughs> like my back was down for a week and a half, almost two weeks. Put me, on, put me through a hole. That was a, a, an attack of the enemy. I have hurt my back getting out of the tub, getting ready to go and start. And I couldn't do it that day. And I, and I would knock me out for two weeks. So it set me back two weeks. Okay. I know you asked that question once. I, once I thought I answered that question, V. I answered that question for you. Can I answer, explain how one day is one year? That's how the scripture tells us. Seven weeks is one, uh, seven years. One week is one year. Okay, that's how the scripture tells us. It's it giving us those weeks as years. And he also used hours as years as well. I already addressed that. I'm sorry that you missed it. Okay, it's one year. They're going to rule with him for one hour. Okay, one year. That's why it's what's happening right now. They're trying to give all the power over to him right now. He don't have it yet. He will have it by August. Okay, because I've been counting. He took power in January 21st. I mean, the 20th, 2021. He started making war of uh, February 24th, 2022. So from that day... Until August this year, it'll be uh, two and a half years, and he that means we're entering his last year, okay? That his last hour is they're going to rule with him for that 12 months worldwide. They're going to prevail against the saints worldwide until Christ comes. So that one hour, we wouldn't last no three and a half years <laughs> with them coming after us. But God has to shorten the days in that one hour, that one year. He has to shorten the days because... That's how uh, devastating it was going to be on the flock. And he did, he said, for the sake of the chosen ones, he did that. Okay? So we, we got to get ready for that, though. We still have to prep and get ready. 
You know, we have to prep and get ready. We know this coming. We're not just be sitting idle and expect God to do everything when he's warning us that we won't be able to buy ourselves a trade. What that's telling you? Prep. That's what that means. He gave me what to do, but they won't let me in to do it. So he got to bring a storm against them so I can give it as much as I can done for before this happens. So we can have food and water and, and nourishment for our body. They're not doing it. They're just standing in there talking to the people talking about God. I ain't getting nobody saved. They ain't saved themselves. They never been got baptized in the name of Christ. Okay, they never been baptized in the name of Christ. If they did, they would have known God was sending me. I knew what they was going to do me before I got there, but they didn't even know I was coming. That means they don't have the spirit of Christ. That's what that means. But they hold a position. He's going to punish them. They're going to get it. Because God loves his church. That's right. He wants his church saved. And these people up there, they're holding up space because they want a position and wealth and money. You know, they don't care about the flock. Those are the hirelings. They've been hired. Okay, I don't want no money. They don't give me no paycheck. I don't want your paycheck. I have the words of God to get God's people ready for what's coming. And we want to use that money that you got in the bank to have storehouses for his people to eat and drink water. Okay? And hygiene. That's what that money going to be used for. <laughs> Not for my pocket or a bank account, but for the people of God. That's what it's for. Okay? I hope you're listening. Hey, man. <laughs> I hope that answers your question, uh, uh, Demiris. Uh, it's coming when the Lord opened that door. Okay. So we know who the Antichrist is and we know who Mr. Babylon is. Right under our nose, the scripture tells us the Antichrist is going to rise up out of the fourth kingdom. All we had to do is search the scripture and see who the fourth kingdom is. Very easy to explain. <laughs> Described it to the T. The most powerful nation in the world. Ten horns, NATO. Okay? Seven heads, but watch for the heads. One of them will be wounded. Ronald Reagan. One's going to come raising taxes. Donald Trump. All those prophecies happen right up on our nose, and nobody's saying nothing about it. They're looking for a seven-year peace treaty with Israel, and that's nowhere in the Bible. They're looking for a prophecy that's not even written. Be following people like John Hagee and all those kind of people talking about a peace treaty with Israel and the Antichrist is going to be shot in the head. The scripture don't say none of that stuff, okay? All that's deception, keeping the people blind. Got people looking for a third temple over there. The Antichrist ain't going to rule it on third temple. He's going to put the mark of the beast on the people. So you, me, the, the temple of God is us. He's going to try to put it on us, those who take it, okay? We need to wake up. That's why time is moving so fast. You are right. And I'm glad we were talking about that today, me and my roommate, Millie. We were talking about that today. The time is moving so, so fast. I can only barely get done what I'm doing on, on the day. And I need to step it up. Though. I'm going to start getting up early, uh, an hour earlier because but I do my, my I got to do my words of Christ first. And then I got to do the message. I got, I got a lot going on. <laughs> you know, so we are entering that time. Um. Yeah, we are entering that time. We got August. It's gonna be. We're gonna enter that last hour of him making war in August. Okay, and he gonna make war all the way until August next year, 2025. But the scripture says he's gonna do that until Christ comes, until Christ, the Ancient of Days, return. Read in Daniel chapter seven, uh, uh, chapter uh, chapter seven, verse 21 and 22. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse uh, 21 and 22. Uh, Joe, it tells you that he's going to prevail against it. I can read it. I can let you see it right here. I can read it to you. Let me get that done. I like to go over these scriptures because we need to wake up. It's happening. These things, I got to go take my Bible to get it fixed. I'm not going to order another one because this is like, I love my Bible. You see how it done fall of them? See how they, let y'all see how it done fell to pieces right here? They're going to cover over here. That means I use it. I don't let just let it collect dust on the, on the shelf. <laughs> wow, man, look how I opened that thing right to Daniel chapter 7. You see that? Look at that. I just opened it one time. Look. <laughs> God is working in this here, dude. I mean, I just pulled, opened the thing up after I showed y'all my Bible. And look what it did. Open right up to the page. I don't have to go looking for it. Look. Verse 21. 
me see, make sure I got Daniel chapter, oh, that's Isaiah, I'm sorry, I was getting excited, guys, I thought that was Daniel, so, but we still popped on chapter 7, maybe I need to read that, Isaiah chapter 7, I'm going to read that when I go off my live, I was getting excited, thinking that like the Lord is working right here with us, here it is right here, verse 21, that's Daniel chapter 7, see that, verse 21 and verse 22, it says right here, I beheld, and that same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until, verse 22, until the Ancient of Days came and he gave judgment to the saints of the Most High. The time came on and the saints possessed the kingdom. You see that? Screenshot it. That's right. I mean, he's going to make war until Christ comes. There's no pre-tribulation rapture. He's making war against the saints, the church, until the coming Messiah get here. Amen. So we see that? So all that preaching, you don't say he's going to deliver us from the, the great suffering. You tell us we're going to have to endure to the end. If you read that chapter, you'll see that. But he who endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. That's what it says. <laughs> That means you got to last until the end and be faithful to him all the way until the end. That's what that means. Faithful to him. Speaking these words out of your mouth, keeping yourself washed in the water of the word and pleading the blood of Christ and announcing that Christ was your blood sacrificed from your mouth and you believe with all your heart that God raised him from the dead and then start quoting these words right here. That's what we're going to do to get through this what's coming. Okay, that's how we're going to make it through it. That's right. Amen. That's how we're going to make it through it. That's why it says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. That means you got to confess Yeshua, human body on the cross, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and the word of our testimony is right here. This is the word of our testimony, the word of God. Amen. That's how we're going to overcome him. We got to do that. We need to know that. Start confessing out of our mouth that word. Don't worry about what's going on around us. They're going to be doing all kinds of things to our loved ones and to make us give in. They're going to do everything under the sun to try to make us give in, okay? We ain't going to give in. That means they might take our children out, our grandchildren out, and threaten to cut their heads off or whatever. We can't give in. We got to prepare ourselves for all of that. We can't give in. God love those are God's children. We are God's children. He let us raise those children to a, a point in time until they get to go on their own. But if something happened with those children that's still in God's power, we can't give in. Keep quoting that word. That's what we're going to have to do. We've got to prepare our hearts. Our heart is the mind. We've got to prepare, prepare our hearts for that. Okay? Can't give in. That's why it's so important to get started now. Washing in that water, being sanctified in the word of God every day. And that's how we're going to make it through this. Okay? Amen, amen, and amen. We covered two messages today. Okay, Jay, you didn't post your message. I guess I'll be reading it and, and sending you a response later. Okay? Okay. So, guys, we are covered those two today. Tomorrow, we're going to cover the 12 tribes. It would be nice if we could just do all three of those together, but it's too long. I do need to take a little break. You know what I mean? But um, we'll cover the 12 tribes. You're going to see when they come home from the scriptures. It's in the Bible. Everything is written. <laughs> it tells us when they're coming home and what's going to happen. So all we have to do is look for those things. And it says that the tabernacle of God will be there. And it's not talking about a third temple that man made. This tabernacle is coming down from heaven that's going to be over there. Okay? You don't see that over there. It says when the 12 tribes come back, that's what's going to happen. Okay? David will be back in there. David, King David coming back just as uh Elijah came back in John the Baptist. It tells us that. So David would be the one, the last king of Israel, that's going to lead the flock back to the land. Okay? And that's who's going to announce um, that the 12 tribes is a nation again. David is going to do that. Okay? <laughs> you can stop using that little, uh, Freemason name, Jesus. They brought that to the church. They sang to that name. They say Jesus gave it to them. They call themselves light bearers. They sing that, that song, This Little Light of Mine. 
That's what they're singing to that uh, Luciferian agenda. And they're the one that introduced that name Jesus to the church. Masons did that. They went to court and got it done, okay? The court, the judge was a Freemason. The judges today are Freemasons. The same thing about the district attorneys. They are all Freemasons. You understand? People need to understand that. Stop following them people. Okay, they had a, a whole, just two, maybe three weeks ago, they was in Missouri, um, thousands of them, with their Mason uniforms on, with their eye and all that, the Mason too. They had all that, they had the uniforms on, and they were singing that song, this little light of mine, and Jesus gave it to me. They the one introduced that name to the church, and all the churches around the world ran with it. Okay, we're not supposed to be used that name. That name is not, well, God gave me a dream last month that that name, his name is not Jesus. Okay, we need to stop that. His name is Yeshua. Okay, you can stop calling him that. You know that's his, he was the sacrifice. His human body was a sacrifice. No, I'm not wrong. If you call him God wrong, not me. His name is not Jesus. I tell you what, translate Yeshua, his original name over in the Middle East into Spanish and see what you get. They call him Yish, uh, 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 Jesus over there now, but that's not his name translated in, in Spanish. I'm not wrong. God is not wrong. Okay, you're wrong by using that name Jesus. That's not his name. His name is Yeshua, spelled with an I. That came to me from the Lord. Okay, you know that. I ain't got to tell you that. You know it. Mason brought that name in the church. That's who did it. <laughs> don't even worry about that uh, Stacy. I wouldn't even worry about that just say it and move on this is the word the Lord gave me when he uh, told me that to, to, before I started doing this he said don't plead with them <laughs> he kept showing me more than one dream say the word and move on don't plead with them Daniel chapter 7, verse 21 and 22. Uh, you didn't screenshot it? I thought you screenshot it. Daniel chapter 7, verse 21 and 22. Um, yeah, that's what God showed me in several dreams. Say the word and move on. Don't, don't dwell on it. So don't dwell on it. I don't need to do that, brother. I don't do that, okay? I do what God gave me to do and present what God gave me to present to his people. Now, you can receive what I said or not. That's your choice. I'm not here to plead with you. I'm not here to do that at all. I'm going to obey God. God gave me the name. His name is Yeshua, and it's spelled with an I, okay? You can hold on to Jesus all you want, but know that Jesus is not his name, okay? So if you want to hold on to that, let's have fun. Okay? That's not his name. Not even in the ancient text. Okay? Jesus goes on and came in, 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 into the English alphabet. Jesus was discovered. The name Jesus was discovered in uh, 1624. Uh, 400 years ago. Christ was here over 200 years ago. 2,000 years ago. The name, the letter J entered into the English alphabet uh, uh, in 1624. That means the letter J is only 400 years old this year. So how could that be our Messiah's name? It doesn't has no, nothing to do with it, brother. His name is not Jesus, okay? His name is not Jesus, okay? I'm not going to dispute with you on that. You just hold on to your Jesus. That's not my God. His name is Yeshua, okay? Now we can leave that now. All right. The devil singing to Jesus. The devil don't sing to, uh, to God. They don't praise God. And that's what the devil worshipers are doing. Worshiping that same name that you name, calling Jesus. That's right. And here you go to worship them just like they, they doing, calling that name in their meetings. That's right. And they are Luciferian. They eat human flesh and drink human blood and sacrifice the devils. And they're using that name. 
No, they don't use God's name with that. They use their God's name. They introduce that name to the church. Jesus. His name is Yeshua. <laughs> I won't, Joe. It just makes me hard. It just it breaks my heart when people don't. You tell them you got this from the Lord, and they still disputing with you uh, about what God gave you to do. You know, these people, they don't hear from God. They do their research, okay? That's their research, going according to the, the, the teaching of man. You know, that's not of God. You know, when somebody try to present something to you, listen. If you want to receive it, that's fine. If you don't, trash it. That's all you have to do. Receive it or don't. Don't tell me I'm wrong because I got mine from the Lord. I don't like people like that when they be doing that. Receive it or don't. You're welcome. <laughs> Hello, little white dove. I've been wanting to hear from you. Um, have you received your book? Have you received your book? Because I asked, I have, I got up another system. I'm gonna send you another book tomorrow because I, I got with the post office today, and we're coming up with a better system to get the books there to you guys quicker. And I really apologize for that. That book been gone for three weeks, and I can't, we can't even find it. We looked, we searched it today, and uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna have to ask you to get off of that subject. Now we're gonna leave that alone. If you come back on here with that again, I'll block you up out of here. That's over with, okay? You can receive the name or you don't. I'm not going to go in no dispute with you anymore. I gave you what the Lord gave. Those who have, who are from the from the Lord, hear us. But those who are not, you just don't have ears to hear. You come back with it again, I'm going to pluck you up out of here. Okay, I'm not going to entertain you anymore. But back to what I was saying to you, little white dove, um, I'm going to, uh, we coming up with a better plan and how we're going to uh, ship the books from now on. And, uh, um, that, that book been out there for more than three weeks now. And uh, you should have that book by now. And they, they don't have no way. They can't even track it. And I'm like, I got to come up with better tricks. This time I'm going to have tracking uh, coming out with the, with the books. You don't have to explain that, Bubbles. I'm done with that. That person there is ignorant. I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to deal with that. I'm not going to deal with that. But I'm going to send another book out tomorrow under this new system that we're coming up with tomorrow and, uh, and get you another book. But if the other one comes, just go ahead and give it to somebody. But I'm sending you one out tomorrow. I was going to send it today, but the post office is meeting with us tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to send it tomorrow once we get all queued in and everything. And I'm going to ship it out. You should get it in by, by Wednesday or Thursday. Okay? That's the new book. But if the other one comes, just give it to somebody. It's still out there somewhere. And I'm sorry it took so long. We I have only a few times, not every time, but only a few times that happened. We, we just a few people it happens, you know. Amen, amen, amen. So with that being said, guys, we're gonna go ahead and call it a night because I do need to rest a little bit. Okay. Amen. Haven't seen you. Hello, Pamela. You haven't seen me in a while. Amen. Good to see you, Pamela. We've been over here for a while now. We've been over here for a while now, uh, Pamela. And uh, I'm sorry you haven't been able to contact us. Amen. Yeah, I mean, I only pray for the church. <laughs> when I pray for the church, that include everybody who is the church. And that's how I pray. You know, it tells us to pray all with all prayer and supplication for the saints. And that's how I pray. Um, and that's what I do. And, you know, when God sends somebody to present the truth to you, it's up to you to receive it or not. And I don't deal with people like that. I want to put up an a, a, a argument 
and then twisted around and said, I'm attacking him. I'm not attacking you. I've been trying to put the truth on you, and you still telling me I'm wrong. And I'm telling you, I got this from the Lord and how he presented it to me, and you still telling me I'm wrong. I don't deal with you no more. I'm done. <laughs> okay? Good night, Stacy. God bless you. I'm about to call it a night myself. Okay? May the Lord bless all of you and everyone that been here on this live and, and, and moved on. Uh, and those of you who are still here, may he bless you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he surround us as a whole, his church, um, with his divine presence and great glory. And let no weapon formed against us prosper and give us peace. I ask that he also provide for us during these times that are about to come up on the earth. With that being said, guys, may God bless all of you and we'll see you manana. If the Lord be willing. God bless you guys.